This video is sponsored by CrateJoy. Yo, what is up guys, and welcome back to McAdies Entertainment. I'm your host as always, Adam McGahey. Coming at you guys with possibly our longest Marvel Zombies video yet, where we'll be going over the entire story of each undead hero and villain from the iconic X-Men franchise. We have covered these already, but I wanted to put them into one giant movie-sized zombie video for you guys to enjoy. This video is certainly going to be a long one, so while you load up on popcorn, I wanted to take a second to thank our very first channel sponsor for sponsoring this video. This is brought to you by CrateJoy. CrateJoy is an awesome box subscription service that literally has a subscription for anyone. From gift boxes for men, women, kids, pets, and everyone in between, CrateJoy has you covered. For this video, I opted to get their monthly comic subscription box, and they sent me some awesome selections from recent Batman, Spider-Man, and Superman comic books. They even have a whole geek category for handsome, stunning nerds like us, so we can get the latest in nerd apparel. Oh, and they have date night in a box, so we can impress our babes. Us nerds, we stay winning, boys. Currently, CrateJoy is running an on-site promo where new subscribers can get 20% off their first box using code WELCOME20. I'll have the link and code for you guys in the description below. So yeah, be a cool boy and check out CrateJoy. Oh, back to the gory goodness of Marvel Zombies. Alright lads and lasses, without further ado, grab your cleanest pair of X-Men pajamas and prepare for the full gory stories of the zombie X-Men. Wolverine Zombie Wolverine is one of the countless superheroes infected by a virus that turned him into a violent flesh-eating cannibal. He made his first appearance in the pages of Ultimate Fantastic Four number 22 back in 2005. He comes from Earth 2149, but his life prior to the infection was very similar to his main universe counterpart from Earth 616. Of course, all of that changed when an alternate version of the hero known as the Sentry came to Earth and infected dozens of Earth's mightiest heroes, turning them into unstoppable flesh-hungry savages. In the early days of the pandemic, Wolverine and his fellow X-Men battled an infected Alpha Flight at Professor X's school for higher learning. During the battle, the mutants were saved by their former rival Magneto, who was one of the greatest resistance fighters at the time. Knowing this threat was far greater than themselves, the mutants put their differences to rest and teamed up to combat the zombies in the streets of New York. Now whenever Magneto and the X-Men put stuff aside, you know it's going down. So dope. Love. The epic team-ups would continue as Nick Fury then contacted the still human heroes and had them all gather aboard the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier so they could strategize on how to put an end to things. The likes of Reed Richards and Tony Stark were tasked with finding a potential cure, while Wolverine was part of a ground team sent to combat the Horde and keep them at bay. It was during this mission that Logan was overwhelmed by a zombie Colonel America and Hawkeye, who simultaneously bit the mutant, infecting him with the virus. While normally his healing factor would prevent a disease like this from affecting him, it was sadly no match for the otherworldly power of the virus, thus transforming the warrior into a member of the Cannibal Legion. I can't say I necessarily agree with this, as Wolverine should be immune to just about every disease. But hey, it's honestly probably just me being a little selfish. I would have loved to have seen the guy be a long-term resistance fighter, just slicing up zombies and regenerating the chunks of flesh that bite out of him. Imagine a video game where you're just taking apart zombies as Wolverine. Now that would be awesome. Okay, fanfiction over. The now zombified Logan and his fellow cannibals then discover that an uninfected Doctor Doom was harboring Latvarian refugees at his castle and had even constructed a portal to lead them to safety in another dimension. The hungry gang then stormed the castle to get access to these refugee sandwiches. Ash Williams, yes the groovy man from the Evil Dead movies, was also here at this time and consulted the use of the evil book known as the Necronomicon. He used it to summon and resurrect the half-eaten corpses left behind by the zombies, turning them into an army of evil dead. The Deadite Legion then arrived at the castle and went to full-on zombie-on-zombie -zombie war with Wolverine and the others, 
only to be quickly sliced down by the hangry mutants. I mean, what do you think was gonna happen? These zombies just have hands. Wolverine's a zombie with hands and claws. Zombie Wolverine for the win. As the horde breaks into the castle, Ash and the refugees manage to escape as Doom destroys the portal. Before getting away, Ash threw the evil book at the zombie so it could be eaten, only for Wolverine to tell it they only eat flesh and proceeds to give it to the Hulk. Hulk then proclaims that since they do eat so much of that yummy gummy meat, they do poop a lot and can use its magical pages as toilet paper. I actually felt pretty bad for the Necronomicon here. Definitely scarred for life after this one. Upon Doom's destruction of the portal machine, Reed Richards infects him and repairs it. He is then able to use it to communicate with and trick a younger alternate version of himself from the Ultimate Universe to come to their world thinking that they would be able to work on projects together. Instead of having a little dimensional study and chill date, the young Reed was terrified upon entering this dimension, seeing that had been ravaged by hordes of undead supers. He managed to escape the zombified Fantastic Four, where he is then saved by Magneto, who led him to safety with a small band of survivors in the subway tunnels of New York. Thinking that they were safely packed away from the gaze of the super cannibals, the group would soon be in danger as Zombie Wolverine just happened to be out on patrol. He was able to use his heightened senses to smell the sweet taste of living flesh and led his band of fellow undead brothers right to the survivor camp. Magneto then uses his abilities to whack the horde with a subway train where they proceed to escape. My boy, just, he just stays winning. With the aid of the other Ultimate Fantastic Four members, Magneto is able to hold off the zombies where he then leads the remaining humans to the portal who get away to the Ultimate Dimension with the Fantastic Four. He says his goodbyes and proceeds to blow the machine up, locking him in the Zombieverse, surrounded by Wolverine and a group of angered undead. This then sets off an intense chase between Magneto and the zombies who were quite adamant in turning the Master of Magnetism into their latest snack. Despite being insanely exhausted, Magneto still proved he had plenty of fight left in him as he managed to cut Colonel America's head in half with his own shield, decapitated Hawkeye, and even brought an entire building upon the Avengers. My dude is OP. Like I said, he stays winning. However, Magneto then gets a little too caught up in the moment and proceeds to gloat, but not before Zombie Wasp came in and bit out his throat. Oh no. I'm speaking in rhymes! Wasp then held the immobilized Magneto as Wolverine and the others swarmed in and completely devoured this former villain turned hero. R.I.P. to one of the coolest X-Men characters ever. After their magnetic meal, Logan and the gang kick back, wondering where their next feast would come from. As all hope seemed lost, thinking that they had picked the world clean, Wolvie and the gang then witnessed the arrival of the Silver Surfer, who came to announce the arrival of his master Galactus, who intended to consume the entire planet. Not listening to a word Shiny Mr. Clean said, the zombies leapt at the chance to get a bite of the chrome-plated warrior. As they attacked, the Surfer proved he was much more than a cool guy on a flying surfboard, and proceeded to zap his assailants with waves of cosmic energy. He even blasted Iron Man right in half, who, despite no longer even having a full digestive tract, still tried to take a bite out of the man. Disgusted and disturbed, the Silver Boy then chucks Zombie Tony off his board, who falls into the streets below. I just, I love how this panel is drawn. It looks like he's just kind of inconvenienced that someone would even dare touch him or his surfboard. It's like he's some snooty waiter throwing someone out of a fancy restaurant. I love it. Never change Silver Surfer. Zombie Thor then comes thundering down with his makeshift hammer and knocks our Chrome Boy off his board, causing him to come falling to the ground. The Surfer then proves the tank that he is by cranking up the intensity and continues to blast more undead, killing several of them in the process. Wolverine, thinking this was his time to shine, jumps into the fray and lunges at the Surfer Hugh Jackman style. This causes his adamantium claws to scrape up against the surfer's near indestructible skin, causing his bones to tear right out of his skin. Yeah man, I'm no doctor when it comes to Wolverine biology, but uh, I don't think that's supposed to happen. Wolverine then reminisces over his lost healing factor which was overpowered by the virus, 
You know, and then proceeds to just pull the remaining bone and flesh from his wrecked arm and just cuts the rest of it off. My man, give an even Deadpool a run for his money. He then comes across the remaining better half of Iron Man, who asks the mutant to toss him back into the fight so he can get another taste. The pair then do their best Aragorn and Gimli impression, as our boy Logan whips the undead billionaire back into the battle. That's, that's true friendship right there. As the surfer continues to defeat more of the horde, none other than a zombified Hulk evens the playing field and joins the fight. He proceeds to grab the shiny man and bites his head clean off, causing all sorts of static electricity looking gore to just come pouring out. Wolverine and a handful of the boys then manage to claw their way, pun intended, to the surfer's chrome-plated corpse, where they then help themselves to a nice silver-wrapped dessert. Upon consuming the poor spaceman, the gang see that this was some pretty nutrient-dense food, where they discover they gained his incredible abilities which allowed them to shoot cosmic blasts out of their hands. They then decide to become cosmic chefs as they fry the rest of their zombie compatriots with these new powers to see if it made them taste any better. But alas, they discover that no matter how much you cook a zombie, dead meat is still dead meat. It's like trying to reheat a McDonald's burger in the microwave that's been sitting in the refrigerator for a few days. It just, it just doesn't work. Once they finish eating up their buddies, the Cosmic Zombie Bros then discover that Shiny Man was telling the truth and the World Conqueror Galactus had arrived to the planet announcing its destruction. Seeing that they had just won the giant fleshy lottery, the zombies tried to attack the space giant, only to realize he was about as tough as a Dark Souls boss. Seeing that retreat was the wisest choice, our one-armed Wolverine and the group escape to Hank Pym's lab, where he, Bruce Banner, and Tony Stark make a machine that could channel all of their cosmic abilities into one unified beam. They complete the weapon, aim it at the big boy and fire, causing a huge obligatory blue comic book laser to shoot out and strike the guy, causing him to scream out in pain and come tumbling to the ground. Seeing that the hard work was now done, a gang of zombie villains come out of hiding, all ready to help themselves and mooch up the hero's food. They are then intercepted by Zombie Wolverine and the Avengers, who let them know that this hunt was all theirs. The boys then go to zombie war with their former rivals, which results in Wolverine going up against a zombified juggernaut. Despite being one of the most powerful mutants around, he was no match for a cosmic-fueled Logan who jammed his claws right into Juggernaut's mouth, activated his powers, and flicked the dude's giant head right off like it was a pimple. Fatality. Wolverine. Wins. Now in zombie rage mode, Cannibal Wolvie and his gang of merry flesh-eating men then proceed to kill the rest of the villains, including the likes of Sabretooth and Dr. Octopus. Galactus then proves he is not quite dead yet, as he gets up, swearing revenge on these hellish creatures for injuring him. Before he could finish his big villain monologue, Wolverine and the boys leap onto the World Conqueror, tearing him open, and commence to help themselves to an all-you-can-eat Purple Spandex Man feast. Upon fully eating Galactus, Logan and the other zombies then level up their cosmic powers and become the next Galactus themselves, traveling planet to planet, completely consuming its citizens, all while in purple cosmic jumpsuits. So, beating Galactus is a lot like a much more messed up version of the Santa Claus. You kill the guy, but you get to become him and get his suit. Sounds like a good plan to me. Wolverine and his new galactic group then eventually find their way to the Skrull homeworld where they slice, dice, and kebab their way through the Skrull citizens, completely devastating the planet. During their cannibalistic conquest, he and the other Avengers would do battle with a dimensionally displaced Black Panther and Fantastic Four. Panther and the heroes would escape, where Wolvie and his homies would proceed to devour the remaining planet inhabitants. The Hulk then gives the group the idea to tap into the full power they inherited from Galactus, and they then use it to legit eat the entire planet. Man, if you thought Wolverine escaping his hot tub and tearing through the Weapon X scientist was scary, just imagine one who will straight up stab you, eat you, and then eat your planet. Yeah, you know what? Um, I don't want to imagine that. I'm good. Logan and the Cosmic Cannibals then spend the next 40 years going through the cosmos 
eating everything and everyone in sight until they reached the edge of the universe and realized that they had picked the entire galaxy nearly clean of life. During his travels, our boy got this sick robot arm with claws in replacement for the one he lost back during the Silver Surfer fight. Not gonna lie, it looks pretty awesome. The messed up zombie family then remember the dimensional machine from Reed Richards and decide to head back to Earth to fix it and access a whole multiverse of unending food. En route to their home, the gang then stop for some fast food and help themselves to Peter Quill's dad, Ego the Living Planet, although a much gooier looking version than what we saw in the movies. Kurt Russell has seen better days. The group then make their way back to Earth where they discover that Black Panther had survived the infection and created new Wakanda where he and the survivors attempted to rebuild society. An impatient Hulk immediately jumps down and begins tearing his way through the last few humans only to be stopped by Giant Man who demanded him to stop so they would not run out of food so quickly again. He proposed harvesting these humans so they could turn them into a breeding program to create an unlimited flesh source. Upon hearing these hellish words, Spidey and Luke Cage finally come to their senses after all this time and rebel against Wolverine and the zombies who go to battle with them. During the fight, new Wakanda chief scientist Reynolds projects a shield around Wakanda, locking Wolverine and most of the other zombies out. Vowing to find a way back in, Logan and the remaining Avengers travel to Reed Richards' Baxter building to get access to the multiverse portal. Upon battling the system's security, the group realized the machine was taken by Forge and was at New Wakanda all along. The infuriated zombies return and go to war with T'Challa and the Resistance. During the commotion, the shield is mistakenly lowered and the undead rush inside to help themselves to some nice survivor sardines. Upon locating them, Giant Man and the boys prepare to feast only to discover that there is a startling change in their biology. After all this time without food, their desire for flesh had faded and for the first time in 40 years, the Marvel zombies were no longer hungry. Upon hearing this, Wolverine did not believe it and went to sink his teeth into one of the humans, only for Giant Man and the others to explain the situation. Logan then let the man go ready to help right the wrongs he and the others had done over the years. However, there was one still very hangry Avenger left, and that of course was the Hulk, who busted through the wall Kool-Aid Man style, ready for some long-awaited meat. Wolverine and the heroes tried to stop the rampaging monster, but he let nothing get in his way, and proceeded to brutally murder several of those who opposed him. The carnage only ended when the scientist Reynolds approached the beast and allowed himself to be eaten as sacrifice. Hulk gladly took the dude up on his offer and gobbled him up while Wolverine and the others watched in horror at the monsters that they had been for so long. Just like his fellow Avengers, Hulk realized his hunger too had faded and he reverted back into Zombie Bruce Banner. He pleaded with Logan and the others that the only way to end this nightmare was to kill him. The gang agreed, and they used their cosmic power to blast off Banner's head, marking the end of the once incredible Hulk. Later on, the group would have a memorial for their fallen heroes and work with the survivors to help repair what had been lost. Logan and the remaining Avengers would then gather at the dimensional portal so they can use it to go to different worlds and gather supplies to help rebuild. The mission was co-led by one of the Resistance leaders, Malcolm Cortez, but the whole thing ended up being a double cross by him, who turned the machine on and transported the zombies elsewhere, leaving him as New Wakanda's forced new ruler. While this was the initial end to Zombie Wolverine's story, it would then be revived from the dead in the pages of Marvel Zombies Return. After being transported through the machine, Wolverine and the others would be separated into different parts of the Dimension World Z, which was a world very similar to theirs before the infection broke out. Due to this dimensional travel, it altered Wolverine's cells, causing him to lose his cosmic power and made his hunger return, therefore spreading the infection to this world. This caused him to become mentally unstable and would then lurk in the shadows of Japan eating the city's homeless so he would not attract attention to himself. 
As time went on, Wolverine became more confident and therefore decided to hunt out in the open, which caused him to track down the kitty pride of this earth who is being hunted by the ninja crime group known as the Hand. Just when you thought things couldn't get any cooler in a zombie story, they throw ninjas in there. Ninjas make everything cooler. He would then brutally murder and eat the ninjas and set his eyes on Kitty, who was shocked and disturbed at what this Wolverine had become. Just before he could catch her, Zombie Spider-Man located Logan and slammed him into a wall and rescued Kitty, where he told her he was working on a vaccine that would cure the zombies of their hunger. In order to complete this vaccine, he would need a sample of this universe's uninfected Wolverine's blood. After the pair got away, Wolverine continued eating the corpses of the ninjas, much to the horror and disgust of Sunfire, who attacked Logan, sending him crashing into a nearby fight club. Zombie Logan then proceeds to kill several of the heroes in the club, including Sunfire, Iron Fist, Elektra, and even lops Shang-Chi's hand clean off. Nobody does that to my king. He is then intercepted by this world's Wolverine, who vows to put an end to this nightmarish, shambling, and rather stankin' alternate version of himself. The two Wolverines engage in a bloody battle, where they are then attacked by zombie versions of the hand that Undead Logan created. Just when ninjas in a zombie story couldn't get any cooler, they then turn them into zombie ninjas. Marvel Zombies Return? Definitely checking all the boxes for me on this one. The pair tear the zombie ninjas apart and then proceed to engage in round two of their fight. Kitty Pride and Spider-Man arrive to the scene where Kitty assists by stabbing Zombie Wolverine in the eye with a stake where he is then literally cut to pieces by this world's Logan, marking the death of the original Zombieverse Wolverine. Spidey then gives Logan the whole story about what happened, which completely blows the man's mind, despite the undead encounter he just had like five minutes ago. He gives Spidey his blood sample, who then swings off, vowing to help save everyone. Things seem to be resolved at the moment, until it is revealed that this Wolverine was also infected at some point during the confrontation. Dude, you just need to go Walking Dead style and chop that thing off. We can't have another zombie Wolverine on our hands. Unfortunately, this Logan was infected and transformed into a zombie sometime after this. However, with the help of Spider-Man, he is able to resist his hunger and then teams up with the Wallcrawler, an alternate zombie Hulk, and Rhodey of this dimension who is the new Iron Man, and they form the new Avengers. The group then goes to war with the other zombified heroes of this realm who wish to spread the virus across the universe. This battle even pit Wolverine up against a zombie version of the Sentry, who is basically Marvel Superman. During the fight, he was able to gut Sentry's stomach open, causing tons of energy to come pouring out. This then does make me wonder if Wolverine could just maybe cut Superman if he wanted to. I'm sure I'll get attacked for this in the comments, but hey, I'm an agent of chaos. As the battle raged on, this new zombie Wolverine enacted Spider-Man's secret plan when he tossed a jar at the infected. Now, this was not just your everyday jar of dirt, it just so happened to contain none other than Flint Marco Sandman. Prior to the fight, the new Avengers worked to modify Sandman's body, where they laden it with special nanites created by Tony Stark that consumed necrotic tissue. Sandman then flooded the area with his body, which resulted in the deaths of all the zombies there, this world's Wolverine included. R.I.P. to Zombie Wolverine number 2. Cyclops. Cyclops Zombie Cyclops, like most of the heroes and villains of his Earth, was infected with an intergalactic plague that turned them into violent undead zombies. He made his first appearance in the pages of Ultimate Fantastic Four number 23 back in 2005. He comes from Earth 2149, but his mutant origins pre-infection were very similar to that of his main world counterpart from Earth 616. As we know though, this all changed one disturbing day when a zombie version of the powerful hero known as the Sentry came to Earth and proceeded to immediately infect the Avengers. Almost instantly, the once noble heroes turned into ravenous cannibals and began snacking on every citizen in sight. As they pillaged the city, 
the super zombies would proceed to infect any hero who tried to stop them. Things would get bad quickly as the virus spread from Manhattan over to Westchester, where we see Cyclops and a group of non-infected X-Men battling a zombified Alpha Flight on the grounds of Professor Xavier's school. A bewildered Storm expressed her shock that the Horde tore Professor X to pieces, only for Cyclops to tell her that they would have to ignore that for now so they could rescue any students they could. Just as it seemed our heroes would be overrun, they see wedges of metal fly through the noggins of the zombies, only to see that they had been saved by their former rival Magneto. Man, from comics to movies, this dude certainly knows how to make an entrance. The Magnetic Master then tells the gang just how bad things were, and that they could no longer hold their powers back. It was either kill, or be killed. Knowing that they had no choice, Cyclop and the others joined forces with their former villain so they could save who was left. Cyclops and the X-Men would then take the fight to the Horde in the city streets, where they would eventually be recruited by Nick Fury aboard the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier, where they would strategize on how to end things once and for all. The scientific minds of Reed Richards and Tony Stark were tasked with finding a cure and a way out of this dimension, while Cyclops and the rest were sent back to the streets to fight the zombies and rescue any remaining survivors. Honestly, huge respect to Cyclops for playing no games and just blasting what appears to be Abomination here right in the head. Dude gained some huge respect for me today. Hard as they fought though, it was during one of these battles that the likes of Wolverine and Cyclops were infected, forcing Magneto and who was left to retreat. Later on, we would come across none other than Ash Williams, yes the same Ash Williams from the Evil Dead movies, who had found his way to this earth as well. He would come to ally himself with the uninfected mutants Dazzler and Scarlet Witch, where they would meet with Doctor Doom in his castle in Latveria, where he was holding survivors. Doom revealed to the trio that he and his scientists were working on a dimensional portal of their own, which they would use to get these remaining humans to safety. Before our heroes could celebrate too soon though, the now zombified Cyclops and a whole army of zombie supers had found out about the survivor stash and made their way to the castle. The hungry boys then stormed the facility, much to the horror of Doom and the others. As the doctor rushed to get the humans through the portal, our boy Ash decided to give the man some time and worked with the evil book known as the Necronomicon to summon a Deadeye army of the half-eaten corpses left behind by the zombies. The Legion then approached the castle as well, where they went to war with Cyclops and the others. However, they were sadly no match for the still very powerful heroes who made quick work of them. But hey, it's okay, Deadites. I'm not mad. At least you tried. The attempt was not in vain though, as it gave Doom just enough time to lead Ash and the others to safety through the portal, which he promptly destroyed. Zombie Reed Richards would repair the machine and use it to lure a younger version of himself to the Zombieverse. Luckily though, the lad was able to escape with the help of Magneto, who blew the machine up for a second time. The rather hangry and angry Avengers then cornered Magneto for what he did, only for the man to prove he still had plenty of fight left in him, and sent a swarm of metal shrapnel, cutting through the flesh of Cyclops and the others. Despite the mutant's best attempts to keep the Horde at bay, he was eventually overran and ripped to shreds. With the Earth in a now global zombie pandemic, Cyclops and the rest soon found themselves without much grub left. They would soon be met though by the Silver Surfer, who made his way to the planet to announce the arrival of Galactus. Skipping the small talk, the zombies attacked the dude who they managed to defeat and eat. Those who got a nibble noticed they got his powers, which they used to cook and eat their fellow zombie pals, Zombie Cyclops presumably being one of them. Jean Grey Zombie Jean Grey, like most of the heroes and villains of her Earth, was infected with a multiversal disease that turned them into organ-eating savages. She comes from Earth 2149, but her origins pre-infection were very similar to her main universe counterpart from Earth 616. This all changed though one awful day from hell when a zombie version of the hero known as the Sentry made his way to this dimension. The Avengers tried to help the rabies-riddled man, 
but instead he lashed out and attacked the unsuspecting heroes, infecting them with the virus. Almost instantly, the plague took over their bodies, transforming them into hungry undead. They then took to the streets of New York, sinking their rotting teeth into any nearby human that they could find. Nick Fury would try to lead an assault of uninfected heroes against the Horde, but the power of the virus proved to be too great as the resistance was either infected or killed. The virus would spread all throughout the Earth, leaving the majority of the planet super zombies and most of the humans dead. Without much grub left, the zombies soon came face to face with the Silver Surfer, who arrived from space on behalf of Galactus to announce that the world was about to be eaten by his large purple boss. Licking their lips at the sight of lean shiny Vin Diesel, the Horde attacked and ate the poor Surfer. The greedy goblins who got to eat the dude got his sweet cosmic powers, which they then used to cook their friends crispier than Anakin Skywalker on Mustafar, who they then proceeded to eat. They then even combined these abilities to defeat and eat the mighty Galactus himself, where they got his powers and matching purple jumpsuits, which they then used to rocket off to space in search of their next hot meal. The cosmic zombies would then spend the next 40 years going throughout space, treating the entire cosmos as one giant flesh food bender. It is during these four long gory decades that they came across our girl Jean Grey, who had been possessed by the Phoenix Force, but sadly not even that was enough to resist the power of the undead virus that they infected her with. Hair still looks good though girl, you, you do your thing. Picking up stragglers such as Thanos, Fire Lord, Gladiator, and Jean, the OG zombie boys soon realized that all good things must come to an end as they reached the edge of reality and realized there was nothing left to eat. As opposing as a zombie Thanos sounds though, he made the sore mistake of accusing Hulk of being the class mooch and eating everyone's food, where Hulk then proceeded to clap his head into fine purple pudding. Rest in peace, zombie Grimace. The remaining group then remembered that prior to his zombification, Iron Man was working on a portal that would lead the survivors to safety in another dimension. Sadly though, the device was destroyed by Thor once things got out of hand, thereby locking the zombies out of other realities. With the brilliant minds of Giant Man, Tony Stark, and Bruce Banner at their disposal, Jean and the rest charted a course back to Earth to fix the machine and access the multiverse of munchies. But first, not without stopping for lunch, on the gooey flesh of Ego the Living Planet. <laughs> Rest in peace, Kurt Russell. While they initially thought the planet was completely cleaned of all life, the zombies were mistaken, as we see that Black Panther had indeed survived, where he ruled over a small settlement of human and mutant survivors. It is here that he was also assisted by a zombified wasp, who had managed to overcome her hunger by going through extensive periods of fasting. However, some of the radical mutants weren't too cool with T'Challa having the throne, so they organized an assassination attempt, which resulted in him being nearly killed, but was saved when he was infected with the virus by Wasp, which caused her hunger to return. The freshly infected Wakandan King was then locked in the Kingdom Vaults with Wasp, where they were forced to detox until their insanity had faded. Once the hunger went away, Panther went to put the traitors on trial, only to see that Jean and the others arrived just in the nick of time. Oh, oh, impeccable timing lads, can't you knock first? Having little self-control, Hulk went to eat everyone in sight, only to be stopped by Giant Man, who told the boys that they needed to be smart this time around, otherwise they would be back to square one. He proposed turning these survivors into a human breeding camp, that way they could have an ongoing supply of human livestock, keeping them satiated until the end of time. Horrified at the thought of this, Zombie Spider-Man and Luke Cage rebelled against Jean and the others, and they began fighting amongst each other. Taking advantage of the situation, Black Panther had his men display a shield around the palace, locking Jean and the other zombies out. Discovering that the shield was impenetrable, the zombies vowed to find a way in and kill everyone inside. 
but they had bigger multiverse fish to fry and flew off to Reed Richards Baxter building in search of the multiverse portal. Upon arrival, Jean and the rest were immediately attacked by the building's security bots, which they made quick work of, only to discover that the portal was not even there and had been taken by Forge years prior and had been at New Wakanda this whole time. Rather ticked that they made this trip for nothing, Jean and the boys furiously flew back to the kingdom, ready to throw hands and chow down. Upon arrival, the gang saw that the shield was still up, but there awaited T'Challa, who came at the horde sparking a deal. He proposed that if they left his people alone, he would give Jean and the others the multiverse device to have unlimited eats in other worlds. Being shockingly civil, the zombie said yes, only for it to be a trick by the quick-witted king, who then closed the shield around them outside the palace where they went to war. As the battle raged on, Jean's Phoenix power clearly had enough of this nonsense, where she rained fire down upon Spidey and the rest. Man, y'all you, thought your girl was scary when she's hungry. How about a zombie girl when she's hungry? Uh, nope, don't want to even think about that one. As the battle with the zombie Phoenix went on outside, Giant Man and several others managed to sneak their way inside the compound where they found the horrified survivors. Just as they went to snack though, they realized that like Wasp, their hunger too had faded after going without food for so long. Jean too, along with the others, realized the same thing where they met with the survivors, deeply sorrowful at the mass genocide that they had caused. Just before they could propose a truce though, Zombie Hulk was still hungry as ever, as he burst through the walls Kool-Aid Man style, ready to find himself a snack. Activating the full power of the Phoenix Force, Jean went in to stop the rampaging creature, dousing him in flames. However, this only made Hangry Hulk even hangrier, who brushed the attack off and punched a hole right through Jean Mortal Kombat style, where he then followed up with a combo by crushing her head into paste. Honestly, served you right, Gene. That's what you get for killing James Marsden in X-Men 3. R.I.P. to that beautiful man and his sick Oakleys. Storm. Storm Zombie Storm, like most of the heroes and villains of this Earth, was infected with a mysterious disease that turned them into flesh-eating monsters. She made her first appearance in the pages of Ultimate Fantastic Four number 23 back in 2005. She comes from Earth 2149, but her storm and origins pre-infection were very similar to her main universe counterpart from Earth 616. Of course, this all changed one god-awful day when a zombie version of the Sentry came to the planet and ripped through the Avengers, infecting them with the undead virus. The zombified heroes turned almost immediately and began devouring every New York resident in sight while infecting any hero that tried to stop them. Things would quickly spread from Manhattan to Westchester as we see Storm and the X-Men battling an infected Alpha Flight on the grounds of Professor X's school. A completely shocked Storm verbally expressed her disbelief at the situation as she exclaims that the zombies had ripped poor Professor X to pieces. Man, poor dude! From X-Men 3, to Logan, to Doctor Strange, and now this? Poor Professor X is basically the Kenny of the Marvel Universe at this point. Just as it seems Storm and the rest would be overrun by the undead, they soon witness Metal Shrapnel tear through the heads of their attackers. This assault of course came from our boy Magneto, who arrived to the scene just in the nick of time. He told the heroes that this was no longer the time to hold back, and that they would have to ally forces and would have to kill to survive and save who was left. Reluctantly agreeing on this union, Storm joined Magneto and her fellow mutant brethren as they took the fight to the zombies to save who they could. Eventually, she, the X-Men, and the remaining non-infected heroes then joined Nick Fury aboard the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier as they planned on how to combat this threat. The brilliant minds of Reed Richards and Tony Stark were charged with finding scientific solutions to things, while Storm and the rest were sent to the streets to combat the zombies and rescue survivors. 
Things would quickly get out of hand though, as heroes like Wolverine were eventually infected, causing Storm and the rest to retreat back to the Helicarrier. However, there would not be too much safety to retreat to though, as Reed Richards had went completely insane after witnessing his children get killed by a zombified She-Hulk. This trauma then made him think that the virus was the next step in evolution, where he proceeded to infect his fellow Fantastic Four members with the virus, who in turn infected him. They then tore through the facility and set their sights on Tony Stark's portal that he had built that would allow them to visit other worlds. As they infected poor Tony, a quick-acting Nick Fury grabbed the portal, which just so conveniently had wheels on it, and pushed it to the back of the helicarrier and sealed off the doors, where he was met by Storm and the rest, who had come back from the battle before. Knowing that their world was at its end, Fury had Thor use his power to destroy the portal to keep other multiverses safe from the zombie threats. Upon doing so, Reed and the other zombies ripped their way through the door where they killed Fury and infected Storm and the remaining heroes. Later on, Zombie Storm and the rest would come to Storm, Doctor Doom's castle, after they found out he was harboring survivors there. She and the other zombie X-Men, along with Reed Richards, were some of the first to break through the castle walls and would proceed to infect Victor. Evil Dead's Ash Williams was also here at this time and used this distraction to use the Necronomicon to summon a Deadite army that went to war with Storm and the rest. While the Deadites did not stand much of a chance, it gave Doom, who was still somewhat in control, just enough time to get the humans through a portal that he and his scientists had created. Once everyone got through, Doom destroyed the device, leaving Storm and the others to starve. After eating nearly everyone on the planet, poor Zombie Storm and the rest thought they would go hungry forever, until they were met by the Silver Surfer, who showed up to announce the impending arrival of his master Galactus. Licking their rotted lips at the sight of the shiny space guy, Storm and the rest attacked before he could even finish his monologue. Uh, not cool guys, you gotta let these things play out, that's just rude! The Surfer proved to pack quite a punch though, as he blasted away at Storm and the others with his powerful cosmic blast. However, strong as he was, the undead's numbers proved to be too great, as he was soon overpowered and devoured by Hulk and a select group of other heroes. Those who got to dine on the dude's sparkly flesh realized they had got his powers, and then used them to throw probably the nastiest cookout ever, where they roasted and ate Storm and the other zombies in the surrounding area. After this act of zombie-on-zombie -zombie violence, the cosmic-powered undead would go throughout space, consuming every planet and person they could get their greasy hands on. Eventually, they would come across the Skrull homeworld, where they would help themselves to a tasty green Skrull buffet. It just so happened during this time that the main universe 616 Storm, along with her husband Black Panther, and several other members of the Fantastic Four, just so happened to be mistakenly teleported to this dimension after messing around with some magic frogs. Don't ask me how it works though. These are magical dimensional frogs. What more do you want? Storm and the heroes would battle against the undead and would even come face to face with the Black Panther of this Earth who had survived and was reconstructing a new Wakanda in the middle of New York. After being forced to kill a team of zombified Super Scrolls, Storm and the rest managed to tap into the frog's power and escaped back to their world before they could be infected by the Cosmic Avengers. Mystique. Mystique Zombie Mystique, like most of the heroes and villains of her dimension, was infected with the multiversal virus that turned them into flesh-eating monsters. She made her first appearance in the pages of Marvel Zombies Dead Days back in 2007. She comes from Earth 2149, but her face-swapping origins pre-infection were very similar to her main universe counterpart from Earth 616. This all changed though one deadly day when a zombie version of Marvel Superman the Century came to Earth and infected the Avengers who tried to help him. The heroes instantly turned into ravenous cannibals who began violently consuming every human in sight. Things would quickly get out of hand as the virus began spreading all over the US. 
As Nick Fury tried his best to align with his strategists on how to fix things, the situation would get completely out of hand one day when the Scarlet Witch, Wanda Maximoff, found herself in the city streets surrounded by the likes of Zombie Black Cat and Star Fox. Terrified and calling out for help, things looked pretty bleak for poor Wanda, that is until her loving brother Pietro, aka Quicksilver, came in to save her. Pietro never turned his back on family. However, it would seem good old Wanda was not quite feeling herself as this all ended up being a trick and she was actually zombie mystique in disguise. Upon being infected, the zombified Quicksilver would then speed throughout the earth, devouring and infecting all in his path, thus quickly causing the virus to become a global pandemic. With the earth in ruin all thanks to a deadly deception, the next we would see of our girl Mystique would be after she took an optic blast directly in the face from Cyclops during a battle in the city streets. While it is not directly clear if that killed the poor blue babe, it can be assumed she ultimately met her fate once a group of zombies ate the Silver Surfer, got his powers, and then used those abilities to cook and eat the not-so-lucky nearby undead. With the mystique of Earth-2149 presumed toast, her rotted body morphing days would live on in the pages of Marvel Zombies Battle World. In this story, Doctor Doom got the powers of a god and then used them to create a whole new reality called Battle World where the supers would get to duke it out like toys in a big cosmic toy box. One section of this reality was called the Deadlands which was a resurrected form of a variant of the Zombieverse. It is here in the Deadlands that we get to see the monster hunter that would give even Van Helsing nightmares, Elsa Bloodstone, who made her way through the hellish wasteland. In her travels, she comes across a mysterious child who she picks up and goes to take to safety. As they made their way to the shield, the pair are attacked by zombies but are saved by the X-Men Angel who was patrolling the area. Glad to get this annoying kid out of her sight, Elsa has Angel take them back to the shield only to discover that this was no Angel at all and was in fact Zombie Mystique herself who brought the terrified kiddo back to her compound where they kept her prisoner. Hey, uh, all things considered, Mystique, uh, looking pretty good for a zombie, eh boys? After taking a bite of the child, Mystique discovered that the young girl was immune to becoming infected and was rather delighted to see that she now had food for her and her friends that would not go stale. Desperate to save the young girl, Elsa snuck into Mystique's hideout, where she discovers that the group had also kidnapped none other than Deadpool, where they had poor Ryan Reynolds restrained and had his head cut open, exposing his brain. The poor handsome mercenary then told Elsa that Mystique and the rest would feed on his brain every night to make them smarter and more strategic, and would basically be a loving buffet, as his organs would just regenerate due to his healing factor. Right before Mystique could kill the girl, Elsa realized that her bloodstone began to glow, giving her super speed, which allowed her to dash away with the kid. Knowing that she could not go back or risk getting her and the child killed, Elsa decided to put Deadpool out of his misery by aiming her weapon at nearby oil drums where he was being held and blew them up, finally freeing the coolest man alive from his eternal torment. R.I.P. Ryan Reynolds. After Elsa encountered a zombified version of her father who plotted to kill her, Mystique and the rest tracked Homegirl down, where they planned to turn her and the child into a nice afternoon snack. After a fight with her father, Elsa was sadly bitten and the infection began to take hold. However, a quick-thinking child blasted Zombie Daddy with Elsa's weapon, knocking the bloodstones off his body. Elsa then managed to absorb them, basically turning her into a zombie Super Saiyan. Man, that's completely ridiculous, and I absolutely need a figure of it right now. Wanting to get dessert, Mystique opened fire on Elsa using a homemade zombie cannon made from the corpse of Zombie Kingpin. However, the powerful blast would be a mere annoyance for the powered-up Elsa, who kindly told Mystique and the rest to bugger off, where she used her new power to blast the mutant and her hungry cronies into pieces. R.I.P. Mystique, even as a zombie, I still loved you, babe. Colossus 
Zombie Colossus, like most of the supers of his Earth, was infected with an alien disease that turned them into flesh-eating but still self-aware ravenous zombies. He made his first appearance in the pages of Marvel Zombies Dead Days number 1 back in 2007. He comes from Earth 2149, but his mutant origins prior to the outbreak was very similar to his main universe counterparts from Earth 616. This all changed though one hellish day when a zombie version of the Sentry found his way to this dimension and infected Colonel America and the other Avengers, transforming them into flesh-eating savages like him. The Fresh Out the Can cannibals then went throughout New York, sinking their teeth into every citizen in sight. The virus would eventually make its way to the grounds of Professor X's school, where we see Colossus and a group of other X-Men battling an infected Alpha Flight. It is here that we also see the mutant Shadowcat, aka Kitty Pride, who also joined the fight and was pregnant with Colossus's child at the time. Completely confused as to why their friends were attacking them, Pyotr and the rest were almost overrun until they were saved by Magneto, who told them they could no longer hold back and that they would have to kill in order to survive and save who is left. The mutants would later on eventually ally themselves with Nick Fury and their fellow non-infected heroes aboard the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier, where they would craft a plan against the growing undead threat. Scientists like Reed Richards and Tony Stark were charged with finding a cure and a way out of this world, while Colossus and the other heroes were sent to the streets to save any remaining survivors while holding off the seemingly infinite super zombies. Hard as they tried, Colossus and the rest were eventually overrun and they were forced to retreat back to the helicarrier. However, their apparent safe zone would not be safe for too long, as Reed Richards had went crazy during his research after witnessing his children get eaten alive by an undead She-Hulk. Believing this virus to be the next step in human evolution, Reed then purposefully infected his fellow Fantastic Four members with the plague, who in turn infected him. The now Frightful Four then barged their ways through the doors of the facility where they set their sights on poor Tony Stark and the dimensional portal he had just finished. Wanting to use this machine to have unlimited flesh access to other worlds, the zombies caught Tony with his iron pants down and infected him so they could use his brilliant mind to aid them in their conquest. As they nibbled on poor Tony, a quick-thinking Nick Fury then wheeled the machine to the back of the helicarrier where he sealed off the doors and just happened to come across Colossus and the others who had come back from the battlefield. Knowing they did not have many options left, Fury had Thor use his might to destroy the portal to prevent the zombies from unleashing their curse upon the multiverse. Upon its destruction, the Fantastic Four tore their way through the door where they devoured Fury and proceeded to infect Colossus and the rest. Not sure how in the world they infected Colossus though being all metal. Uh, maybe Reed Richards used his stretchy powers to take a page from Majin Buu's book and entered his mouth where he bit up his insides. <laughs> you know what, maybe, maybe, maybe I don't want to think of that. Later on, the now zombified Colossus and the gang would discover that an uninfected Doctor Doom was harboring survivors at his castle in Latveria. With Colonel America leading the assault, Pyotr and the other undead X-Men stormed the fortress. However, with the aid of Ash Williams, Doom was able to get everyone through to another dimension using a portal that he and his scientists had created. Once everyone got through, Doom destroyed the device, locking the undead in this hellish world to starve. The virus would eventually spread throughout the Earth, leaving Colossus and the rest with very little to eat. Just as they thought they would go hungry forever, the starving boys and girls would soon be greeted by the Silver Surfer, who came to announce the arrival of his master Galactus. An overjoyed Colossus and the Horde then greeted their new guest to dinner, where they overwhelmed and consumed the man whole. The lucky heroes who got a taste of the Cosmic Bald Man then realized they had gotten his powers in the process. Not being part of this fortunate elite group, our metal boy was at the mercy of the Cosmic Zombies who used their powers to cook and consume Colossus and the remaining zombies. Years later, it is revealed that Kitty Pride had managed to survive the outbreak where she eventually gave birth to Colossus' son, whom she named Peter. Armed to the teeth against the Horde, Kitty and her son would bond and carve out a life for themselves 
in this cruel new world that Colossus tried to prevent and eventually fell victim to. Angel Zombie Angel, like most of the supers from his world, was infected with a multiversal alien virus that turned them into starving ravenous cannibals. He made his first appearance in the pages of Ultimate Fantastic Four number 22 back in 2005. He comes from Earth 2149, but his mutant origins pre-infection were very similar to the angel we all know and love from the main Marvel world of Earth 616. For anyone who has watched these videos for more than a minute, we all know this changed one day when a zombie version of the hero known as the Sentry came to Earth and began infecting the Avengers with the zombie virus, which caused them to turn into undead themselves where they began violently snacking on every human in their path. Attempting to mount an assault against the growing undead, Nick Fury gathered Angel, his fellow X-Men, and the non-infected heroes at the time aboard the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier so they could plan a form of attack. Nerds like Reed Richards and Tony Stark were charged with finding scientific solutions to the plague, while Angel and the rest were sent to fight the hordes and rescue who was left. Sadly though, it was during this time that our homie Warren was infected as he joined his rotten brothers and sisters against the resistance. With most of the world's heroes falling to the deadly plague, its reach would spread all over the earth, leaving the majority of the population eaten. With the snack well nearly dry, Zombie Reed Richards would activate a portal to the multiverse, only for the human pizza party to get shut down quickly by a still living Magneto who blew the machine up. Not too happy with the mutant for what he did, Angel and a group of others surrounded the dude, ready to curb stomp and gobble up his guts. The mutant would not go down without a fight though, as he unleashed a barrage of metal into the horde. Stealing Colonel America's shield, Mags escaped to the ground below as he evaded the sight of Angel who patrolled the city skies. Nearly getting away to safety, Magneto got snuck attacked by a zombie wasp and got cornered by Angel and the rest who devoured the poor man whole. Realizing he may have just eaten his last meal, Angel and his homies sat back depressed, that is until they were met by the Silver Surfer who arrived to the planet on behalf of his master Galactus. Not even giving the dude time to talk, Warren and the rest viciously attacked the poor guy who was just trying to do his job. The surfer, refusing to go down without a fight, surprised Angel and the others as he blasted them with his mighty cosmic powers. Despite racking in a decent number of zombie kills, Undead Hulk would come to level the playing field as he bit the man's head off, where he and some lucky Avengers members got to snack on his shiny carcass. They then realized that after the meal, they got the surfer's powers, which they then used to cook and eat the surrounding zombies, killed Galactus where they ate him, got his powers, and then used them to travel throughout space, eating everything and everyone in sight. Man, these zombies do more in a day than most of us do in a week. <sighs> it's almost inspiring. While it would appear that Angel died in the zombie barbecue, it is later revealed he in fact survived and came to work under Zombie Kingpin, who had created a new undead empire for himself with the Cosmic Avengers gone. He and his men found a way to access a route into the main Marvel Universe of Earth-616, which caught the attention of the dimensional protection group called Armor. Seeing this zombie virus as a threat to their world, Armor scientists sent the robot heroes Machine Manager Costa to this Earth to get a blood sample from a remaining human so they could create a vaccine. Upon arrival to the Zombieverse, the pair are immediately attacked by the still-living Angel and several other flying undead. Hey, all things considered, despite being a zombie this long, Angel still has most of his body and looks pretty good. Drop the zombie skincare routine, bro. Much to the zombie's disappointment though, there was no sweet fleshy bits to get from the mechanical heroes who quickly went to work on eviscerating them. Happy to get some vengeance out on these vermin, Machine Man went full Inspector Gadget mode on Angel, where he activated his hand buzzsaw, which tore the former hero in half, raining blood and guts on everyone. 
terminating with extreme prejudice, Machine Man blew the remaining flying undead to pieces, ridding this world of one more hungry threat. Nightcrawler Zombie Nightcrawler, like most of the beings of his world, was infected with an alien illness that transformed them into crazed flesh-eating zombies. He made his first appearance in the pages of Ultimate Fantastic Four number 23 back in 2005. He comes from Earth 2149, but his mutant origins prior to the outbreak were very similar to that of his main universe counterpart from Earth 616. Kurt's world would come to a crashing end one dreaded day though, when a zombie version of the Sentry came to Earth and infected the Avengers with the alien plague. Almost immediately, the heroes transformed into blood-hungry beasts and started devouring every human in their path. Confused and devastated as to what was going on, Nightcrawler joined his non-infected X-Men in the city streets as they took the fight to the growing undead army. Kurt and the others were then eventually brought aboard the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier by Nick Fury, where they discussed strategy on how to fix things. The likes of Reed Richards and Tony Stark were tasked with finding scientific solutions to the virus, while Nightcrawler and the rest were sent to the city to rescue survivors and hold off the super zombies. However, the growing power of the virus turned to be too great, as heroes like Wolverine were overwhelmed and infected, causing Nightcrawler and a group of other heroes to retreat back to the helicarrier. They would only be retreating from one hellish location to another though, as Reed Richards had went crazy after losing his children to the virus and purposefully infected himself and his other Fantastic Four members. The now zombified Frightful Four then set their hungry eyes on the dimensional portal Tony Stark had completed so they could get access to an entire multiverse's worth of flesh. Before they could strike, Nick Fury was able to push the machine into the back of the helicarrier and sealed off the doors where he was met with Nightcrawler and the others who had retreated from the battle before. Man, poor Nightcrawler. Dude looks like he was happy to just take a break from all the fighting and just wanted to grab a snack, only to see that there was even more fighting to be done up here. Just want to give the little guy a hug? As the four pounded at the door, Fury realized that this was the end of the line for their world. He then instructed Thor to destroy the portal to lock off the multiverse from these zombie maniacs. Upon doing so, Zombie Reed and the others made their way through where they killed Fury and infected Nightcrawler and the rest. Later on, the now zombified Kurt and the other hungry heroes then discovered that Doctor Doom, who was not infected, had been harboring survivors in his castle where he and his scientists were working on a portal of their own that would lead them to safety in another dimension. All ready to help themselves to the survivor sandwiches, Nightcrawler and the rest led an assault on the castle. Kurt and his fellow X-Men were actually some of the first to break through the structure walls where they ganged up on Doom and infected him with the virus. Upon witnessing Doom getting jumped, we then see Ash Williams, who too was in this dimension at this time. He then snuck into Doom's library and worked with the evil book called the Necronomicon to summon a Deadite army that went to war with Nightcrawler and the other zombie heroes. The Deadites were sadly no match for the Super Fiends, but it gave a rapidly declining Doctor Doom time to lead the others through the portal before his infection could take hold. He then blew the machine up, locking the zombies out of the multiverse kitchen. The Horde would eventually eat their way up the ranks where they would come across the Silver Surfer, who arrived to the planet to announce the arrival of Galactus. Starstruck at how delicious this handsome spaceman looked, the gang attacked and ate the poor Cosmic Herald. The zombies who got to eat the dude quickly realized they got his powers and then used them to solve the world hunger issue by cooking and eating poor Nightcrawler and the rest of the zombies present. Cutting across worlds to Earth-19121 in the pages of Marvel Zombies Resurrection, we would also come across a Nightcrawler of this Earth who too was infected with the respawn zombie virus. The mangled mutant would attack a non-infected Spider-Man and group of survivors and would come close to infecting them, only to get blown to pieces by a reprogrammed sentinel called Nana. Nana for the win! She always got your back! Beast! Beast.
Zombie Beast, like most of the heroes and villains of his world, was infected with a mysterious plague that turned them into violent but still self-aware rotting zombies. He made his first appearance in the pages of Ultimate Fantastic Four number 23 back in 2005. He comes from Earth 2149, but his mutant origins pre-infection were very similar to the friendly furry genius we all know and love from the main Marvel Earth of 616. That all changed though one bloody day when a zombie version of the century came to this dimension and infected Earth's mightiest heroes, transforming them instantly into demented flesh-eating demons. The infection would then spread from hero to hero throughout the city, resulting in a vast majority of New York's population being devastated. Beast and the remaining X-Men would then join Nick Fury and their fellow non-infected heroes aboard the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier, where they would discuss strategy on how to end this quickly growing threat. The scientific heroes like Reed Richards and Tony Stark were tasked with finding a cure and a way out of this world, while the other heroes were sent to the streets below to rescue survivors and hold off the zombie horde. It is unclear whether Beast was part of the ground team or joined his fellow intellectuals in researching the virus, but regardless, things quickly got out of hand, resulting in the cuddly blue man sadly becoming infected. He then allied himself with Zombie Reed, where the two worked together to reprogram Professor Xavier's Cerebro program to locate any remaining humans to snack on. Through this research, they found a nicely sized food hall in Latveria as a non-infected Doctor Doom was keeping refugees there. Man, only thing worse than a zombie is a smart zombie. You know you're in trouble when the undead start using science to figure out ways to eat you. Doom and his scientists were working on a dimensional portal of their own that would lead these remaining humans to safety in another world. Discovering this tasty news, Beast and Richards gathered the other zombie heroes together where they launched a full-on undead assault on the Good Doctor's castle. McCoy and his fellow X-Men were some of the first to break through the castle walls, much to the surprise of a very shocked Doctor Doom. Hank reveals just how he found the refugees to Victor, where he then has Richards jump scare the poor dude, where they gang up on him and infect him with the virus. As Doom got zombie curb stomped, we then see Ash Williams, who was also here at this time. He took advantage of this distraction to run to Doom's library, where he worked with the evil book called the Necronomicon to summon a Deadite army of the leftover bodies left behind by the zombies. The Deadites then went to war with Beast and the others, but hard as they tried, they were no match for the big blue furry and his zombie friends. All was good in the hood though, as it gave a rapidly declining Doctor Doom just enough time to get Ash and the humans through the portal, which he promptly destroyed. As they ate their way up the food chain, Beast and the rest thought they were all out of grub, only to be soon be met by the Silver Surfer, who showed up to the planet to announce the impending arrival of his master Galactus. Starstruck at the zesty space snack, Beast and the others wasted no time where they brutally attacked the dude who was just trying to do his job. The Surfer proved to be much stronger as he looked though as he blasted the vermin with waves of his cosmic energy. Racking up some sweet kills, it would seem the Surfer would be victorious, but soon had the high ground sadly taken from him after getting knocked off his board by Zombie Thor. <sighs> Obi-Wan would be proud. Crashing to the city streets, the Surfer did not break a sweat as he continued blasting the merciless mob. Our boy Beast would manage to leap on the guy and attempt to wrestle him down, only for Zombie Hulk to rudely interrupt by grabbing the Surfer himself and proceeded to bite his head off. Colonel America and a select group of other heroes then managed to get their greasy zombie hands on the Surfer's flesh, while zombies like Beast had to jealously watch. After the feast was complete, a rightfully angry Beast decided to go full Karen on Colonel America for being so greedy, only for Steve to argue back, where he noticed a beam of energy blast out of his fingertip, which popped Beast's head right off its rotted blue body. <sighs> R.I.P. big guy. Dude just wanted a snack. Shocked at these new abilities, Colonel America and the rest realized they had got the Surfer's powers, which they then used to hold the cannibal barbecue, where they cooked and ate all the zombies in the surrounding vicinity. While the beast of this dimension would be dead, 
He would also have an undead counterpart on Earth-19121 in the pages of Marvel Zombies Resurrection. On this Earth, Hank and a group of other heroes were recruited by Reed Richards to investigate a distress call by Captain Marvel involving something she had found in the deep recesses of space. On their mission to meet with Carol, the group discovered that the signal came from the hollowed-out corpse of the World Conqueror Galactus. Shocked to see this, Hank and the other heroes then cautiously entered the body of the Earth Eater. As they studied the corpse, it is revealed to all be a trap set up by Captain Marvel, who had been infected with the zombie virus. Her and a horde of undead then came out of their bloody hiding spaces, where they overwhelmed Beast and the others, infecting them in the process. Using Galactus' body as a big nasty fleshy spaceship, the zombies then crash to Earth, where they infect the majority of the planet's heroes and consume the majority of the population. Years later, we see that only Spider-Man, Forge, Moonstone, and Reed Richards' children, Franklin and Valeria, had survived as they made their way through the apocalypse. They eventually made their way to the X-Mansion, where they discovered a group of non-infected who had went crazy and actually worshipped the zombies and believed they were the next step in evolution. The crazy cultists had been all kinds of messed up and had actually been leading survivors to the mansion and were feeding them to none other than zombified beast. Shocked at seeing his former friend like this, Forge tried to reason to any humanity still left in Hank, only for the mutant to rip him apart. Honestly, Forge is much braver than me. I see a giant furry cannibal man eating people, I am blasting first, then running, and asking questions later. R.I.P. my man. Knowing that Hank was beyond saving, Spider-Man then leapt on the former hero and used the line of piano wire to decapitate him. Seeing that the head was still alive, Franklin Richards spoke to it about the whereabouts of his infected parents. The head then informs the boy that the Fantastic Four, along with the others, were chilling with Galactus' corpse at the end of the world and were waiting for them all. Not wanting to hear any more of this weird zombie space talk, Moonstone then ended poor Hank's suffering by blasting his head to pieces. Man, no matter what universe he's from, Zombie Beast just can't stay ahead of a good old laser blast. Iceman. Ice Zombie Iceman, like most of the supers of his world, was infected with an alien illness that turned them into hungry but still intelligent undead zombies. He made his first appearance in the pages of Marvel Zombies Dead Days number 1 back in 2007. He comes from Earth 2149, but his chilly mutant origins pre-infection were very similar to that of his main universe counterpart from Earth 616. This all changed though one awful day when a zombie version of Marvel Superman the Sentry came to the planet and infected the Avengers, converting them to his unholy cannibal cult. The zombified heroes then stormed the city streets, where they tore apart every poor citizen that got in their hungry path. As the infection spread like wildfire, Iceman joined his fellow X-Men and the non-zombie heroes at the time aboard the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier, where they discussed strategy on how to fix things. Scientists like Reed Richards and Tony Stark were tasked with finding scientific solutions to the threat, while Iceman and the rest were sent to the New York streets to fight off the Horde and save who they could. Things would quickly prove quite deadly though, for at some point during one of the battles, the likes of Wolverine and Iceman were infected, causing the other heroes to retreat. Although, similar to Sandman who we covered before, how does it work with Iceman getting infected? Dude's body is like legit all ice. It would be like biting into an unflavored popsicle. Sometime after this, a now zombified Iceman and the rest discovered that former villain Dr. Doom was gathering survivors at his castle where he and his scientists had created a portal device that would lead them to safety in another dimension. Eager to get their hands on this giant bag of human potato chips, Bobby and the other zombies stormed the castle much to the surprise of a horrified Dr. Doom. As Victor rushed to the portal to save the humans, Ash Williams, yes the same dude from the Evil Dead movies, also happened to be here at this time. He rushed to Doom's library where he used the evil book called the Necronomicon to summon an army of deadites that made their way to the castle and went to war with Iceman and the others. 
While the Dead Boys put up a great fight, they were no match for the Mighty Zombie X-Men and the rest, but that was okay because it gave our boy Doom just enough time to get everyone through the portal, which he immediately destroyed. Mind you too, our boy was infected during this, yet held it off long enough to save this last batch of humans. Dr. Doom for the win, baby! With the door to the multiverse locked, the zombie plague would spread throughout the Earth, leaving it nearly devoid of all human life. With not much left to eat, the undead heroes would soon be met by the Silver Surfer, who arrived to announce the arrival of Galactus. The hungry heroes would attack, and a lucky group would get to consume the poor man, where they realized they got his powers, which they used to cook and eat their fellow undead friends. Not long after this, they would soon come face to face with Galactus himself, who they also managed to defeat and eat. After consuming the big boy, the lads got his powers as well, which gave them the ability to travel through space. They then used these abilities to rocket off to the stars, where they began eating every planet and its people that they could find. So, uh, remember next time you guys see a shooting star and make a wish? It may not be a star at all. It just may be the Marvel Zombies. Sleep tight, y'all. As the Galactic Horde was off on their cosmic bender, we then meet up with the main universe Deadpool of Earth-616 while on a mission for AIM, who came across the decapitated but still very living zombified head of his variant from the Zombieverse. The story as to why his head was here is super long, super confusing, yet super awesome. I will have the full link to our Zombie Deadpool video in the description below. Eventually becoming besties, Deadpool went to help his bodiless counterpart and wished to return him back to his hellish homeworld. With the help of two AIM scientists he kind of unwillingly got to go with him, Deadpool later discovered that within the swamps of Florida was a portal that would lead them back to the Zombieverse. Being pursued by agents of AIM who were also after the head, Deadpool got his hands on a blimp and tried to escape, but was soon attacked by Zombie Iceman and Firebird, who had somehow managed to survive the cosmic zombie attack from before. As Deadpool dealt with the likes of Thunderbird, Deadpool's buddies Dr. Betty Swanson, Zombie Deadpool's head, who we'll call Headpool, and Bill were forced to deal with a very hungry zombie Iceman. Headpool, who was cured of his hunger, tried to talk to Bobby out of attacking and that he too could be cured, only for the cannibal snowman to refuse the peace offering. Headpool's eloquent speech though was only a diversion as Dr. Betty and Bill unleashed a barrage of gunfire on the dude in an attempt to stop him. The mutant laughed at this pathetic attack and went to claim his fleshy prizes, only to be met by Deadpool, who arrived just in the nick of time, in his boxers, while popping a wheelie on a motorcycle. That just may be the most Deadpool thing I've ever seen Deadpool do, and I absolutely love it. Wade then leapt off the bike, which plowed into Iceman, sending him hurtling off the skyscraper that they were in. The icy boy then came crashing down upon a beam, where the motorcycle soon followed and crushed him, permanently paralyzing the former X-Man. Crying out in pain, Bobby asked for Deadpool to help him down, only for the mercenary to walk away, as Iceman cried for his mom. Man, only Deadpool can have an Omega-level mutant cry for his mom, and I'm here for it. Gambit Zombie Gambit, like most of the heroes and villains of his world, was infected with a mysterious plague that turned them into violent, self-aware undead monsters. He made his first appearance in the pages of Marvel Zombies issue number 3 back in 2006. He comes from Earth 2149, but his mutant origins pre-infection were very similar to his main universe counterpart from Earth 616. This all took a turn to hell though one horrible day when a zombie version of the hero known as the Sentry made his way to this Earth and infected the Avengers with the undead virus. The infected heroes immediately turned from this powerful plague and began ripping into the flesh of every horrified nearby citizen. As New York's population was devastated by the quickly growing zombie army, Nick Fury gathered the likes of Gambit, the X-Men, and the remaining non-infected superheroes at the time aboard the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier so they could form a plan of attack. Scientists like Reed Richards and Tony Stark were tasked with finding a cure and a way out of this world 
while Gambit and the rest were sent back down to the city to save survivors and hold back the hungry horde. Hard as they fought, heroes like Gambit were overpowered and infected during one of these battles, causing the small group of non-infected left to retreat. Once the likes of Quicksilver were infected, it resulted in a global pandemic that left the majority of Earth's heroes and villain zombies and most of the population quickly wiped out. Without much fleshy snacks left, a now zombified Gambit and the rest would soon get their hopes up once they realized that a still human Doctor Doom was gathering survivors at his castle where he and his scientists were working on a portal that would lead everyone to safety in another dimension. More excited than a kid on his way to McDonald's, Gambit and a whole army of undead supers arrived at Doom's facility where they planned to help themselves to the survivor buffet. The zombies soon breached the castle walls and infected Doom, but a quick-thinking Ash Williams, yes the same guy from the Evil Dead, rushed to Doom's library where he used the Necronomicon to summon an army of deadites to fight the hungry supers. The book's power then resurrected and possessed the half-eaten corpses left behind by the zombies who then stormed the castle and went to war with Gambit and the others. Sadly though, the Deadites were no match for the mutant's power and were quickly torn to shreds. RIP Deadites. However, this quick thinking action of Ash saved the day though, as it gave Doom just enough time to get the humans through the portal, which he then destroyed before his infection could take hold. With the door to the multiverse buffet destroyed, Gambit and the rest picked the earth clean and were soon again left with nothing to eat. The Horde would then get their hungry hopes up once again though, as they soon witnessed the arrival of the Silver Surfer, who arrived to the planet to announce the arrival of his master Galactus. Ignoring the dude and just seeing a tasty lunch wrapped in aluminum foil, the zombies attacked. Our bald boy bravely fought back though, as he blasted the Cretans with waves of his cosmic energy. Soon enough though, a quick thinking Thor took the high ground from the dude when he came crashing down upon him with his ghetto hammer, knocking him to the ground. Thinking this would slow the surfer down, the zombies were quickly proven wrong when the dude simply reloaded and kept blasting. Silver surfer, man. This boy built different. It is here where we see our homie Gambit try his best to take the dude down, only to get a hole blown right through his chest, and then gets his head popped off right in the very next panel. Hey man, you tried. You may not be the smartest or strongest zombie out there, but we still support you, Gambit, and we love you, no matter what. Deadpool Zombie Deadpool, like most of the heroes of this dimension, was infected by a multiversal virus that transformed them into intelligent blood-hungry cannibals. He made his first appearance in the pages of Marvel Zombies issue 3 back in 2006. He comes from Earth 2149, but his origins prior to the outbreak were very similar to his main universe counterpart from Earth 616. Of course, all the chimichanga eating fun came to an end when a zombified version of the Century, who is basically Marvel Superman, was teleported to this world. He then proceeded to tear through this Earth's heroes, infecting them all with the virus. The converted hungry heroes then proceeded to pick the earth clean, devouring nearly every terrified human they could get their grubby zombie hands on. They even tried to access an alternate dimension using a portal device made by Reed Richards and Tony Stark, but thankfully the former X-Men villain turned goat hero Magneto risked his life and blew up the machine, locking the horde in this dimension to starve. The mutant then put up a noble fight against the hungry heroes, but was quickly overpowered and devoured. After this fast food stop, the zombie supers then kicked back, a little depressed they had just scarfed down their last tasty fleshy snack. As they sat depressed, thinking they would starve faster than Patrick who ate all his candy bars, they then see that their zombie prayers may have just been answered when they see the chrome-covered Harold himself, the Silver Surfer, arrive to the planet. The spotless shiny man arrived to the Earth to analyze it to see if it was nourishment enough for his master Galactus to consume. Upon seeing that it was just nutrient dense enough, the surfer flashed a blinding light in the sky and announced to the Horde that their end had come. Our zombie heroes, however, ignored the surfer's apocalyptic prophecy and attacked. Come on guys, he was just doing his job, I mean, cut him some slack, 
I'm sure he's got a little silver wife and kids at home. He's got little silver mouths to feed. Not about to be turned into a can of zombie chow just yet, the surfer proved how much of a chad he was by blasting the supers with waves of his cosmic energy. As he laid waste to the surprised Avengers, Zombie Thor came in and made his presence known by thundering down upon the Silver Boy, knocking him off his iconic board. Falling to the ground below, the surfer did not skip a beat and simply reloaded and continued blasting. Frank Reynolds from Always Sunny would be so proud. As he continued the onslaught in the city streets, we finally get our very first and only glimpse of Zombie Deadpool in the original Marvel Zombie storyline. It was here that our very hungry Wade Wilson was part of the zombie gang that attacked the surfer in the city streets. However, upon witnessing his homies getting taken out left and right, Deadpool knew this battle was a lost cause and played things smart and bailed at some point during it. See, he may be crazy and may never shut up, but Deadpool's no dummy. He knows the drill. After Deadpool made his grand exit from the cosmic carnage, Zombie Hulk came in and showed who was the big green boss by biting the surfer's head right off his shiny body. He and a select group of others then partook in the cosmic feast where they inherited the surfer's powers. They then used this great power, without much responsibility, to fry and eat their zombie buds and defeat and eat the mighty Galactus. Sheesh! Zombies or not, these guys stay busy. Well hey, like The Rock says, it's about drive, it's about power, we stay hungry, we devour. Official motto of the Marvel Zombies. After consuming the World Conqueror, the Zombie Avengers then acquired his abilities which allowed them to travel planet to planet, eating it and its citizens like Cosmic Pez Dispensers. Once the Cosmic Zombies left the planet, Zombie Pool aligned himself with the likes of Zombie Kingpin, who forged a mafia of undead supers he rallied to his side. And yes, before you ask, yes Zombie Fisk is drinking a nice little cup of blood with some cute little eyeball ice cubes in it. Hey, even as a zombie, the man still tries to enjoy the finer things in life. After creating his new entrail eating empire, Fisk and his men found the partially functioning remains of zombie Doctor Strange who was severely injured after getting a car dropped on him. Uh, Sorcerer Supreme or not, you get a car dropped on you, I don't think you're doing so hot. The brain damaged doctor was then left with only two spells that he could cast. One could summon unlimited mana from heaven for the zombies to eat, and the other was the ability to peer into other dimensions. The dimension that they were able to locate was one actually very close by, which just so happened to be the main Marvel Universe from Earth-616. Wishing to spread the virus to this main continuity Earth, Fisk being Fisk, devised a deadly plan. I bet you're wondering, hey, uh, Adam, Mr. McAdies, this is a Deadpool video, right? You're a couple minutes into this, and we've only seen him once. What gives, bro? Trust me, homies, he's coming. You can't rush the art that is zombie Deadpool, all in good time. Fisk and his hungry men discovered that hidden within the swamps of Florida was the nexus of realities which actually served as a portal of its own that would let them travel to this main continuity Earth. The first phase of Kingpin's plan involved covertly sending in the now zombie vampire Morbius into the 616 Earth. It was at this time that there existed a secret government group similar to S.H.I.E.L.D. called Armor which served to protect different realities from each other. The main universe Morbius, the living vampire, was one of the lead scientists for this top research group. The zombie Morbius then snuck in and beat up his main universe counterpart and took over his identity as this Earth's Morbius to win the trust of the unsuspecting scientist. He even used a prosthetic mouthpiece to cover up his little nasty zombie mouth. You probably could have just brushed your teeth, bro, but hey man, that, that works too. The next part of Fist's plan then finally involved our favorite regenerating degenerate, Deadpool. Once Zombie Morbius was undercover, Fisk then sent in Zombie Deadpool through the portal in the Florida Swamp to get the attention of Armor and the nearby heroes. Happy to get some fresh flesh after so long, Zombie Deadpool happily went through the portal and entered the main Marvel Universe where he began infecting the local Florida residents. 
The disturbance caused a small team of heroes to investigate, which consisted of the American cyborg Siege, the sorceress Jennifer Kale, the eternally young Conquistador, and the peacemaking alien Aquarian. Never heard of these guys in my life before reading this comic, but hey, they're absolutely ridiculous, and I love them all. They then came across a shack in the middle of the swamp, where they discovered the civilians in danger. However, like most horror movie tropes, these innocent civilians of course ended up being zombies, where they infect Siege and attack the others. The zombies manage to completely rip Conquistador apart, where Jennifer and Aquarian do their best to hold the horde off. Upon seeing this group of heroes had a mage, Zombie Deadpool emerges from the shadows to assist his zombie bros, where we get our first good look at him. And man, he makes Undeath look so good! See guys? Told you it was worth it! He then attacks Jennifer Kale, interrupting her spell, and even bites into Aquarian, declaring that he tastes it like October 1973. Not sure what October 1973 tastes like, but hey, it's probably groovy. He holds on to the wounded hippie hero as they do battle in the air above. Aquarian manages to project a force field around himself, knocking the mercenary off of him. He then proceeds to blast Deadpool right in the stomach, but then Deadpool just mocks him, saying that such an attack was nothing, even without his healing factor. However, this was a quick thinking plan by Aquarian, who used the blast to knock Deadpool into a nearby skiff, where Jennifer Kale then turned on the boat's fan, blending our poor Deadpool boy into fine bloody chunks all over the swamp. The uh, smoothie anyone? Aquarian, feeling the infection taking over, enters a magic cocoon to purify the plague from his body. Just then, Jennifer, still covered in Deadpool guts, is then attacked by Zombie Siege, who plan to turn the poor girl into a nice sorceress snack. He chases her into the nearby cabin, but just before he could take a nibble, his machine half activates and detects the virus within the organic parts of his body and decides to eliminate it by completely blowing the cyborg's head clean off. Exploding Terminator zombie heads? Man, Marvel Zombies really has everything, doesn't it? While it may have seemed poor Deadpool met his ninja blended demise before getting a bite, he managed to stay ahead of his haters and his literal head survived the attack. The zombie noggin was then picked up by armor, where it was then placed in containment, where he constantly bugged the troops, saying that his foot was itchy. Man, I've heard of phantom pain, but phantom itchiness? Ah, that sounds awful. Since this Deadpool head was now in custody of the main Marvel Universe, the armor team knew that this dimension was in danger of becoming infected. They immediately wanted to take action to prevent their universe from suffering the same fate of the Marvel Zombieverse. The undercover zombie Morbius then proposed sending an agent to the Zombieverse in order to get a blood sample from a human of that Earth so he could create a vaccine for this dimension where they would inoculate the world's heroes. This in secret was all a ruse planned by Fisk where zombie Morbius would actually inject all of this world's heroes with the virus, transforming this Earth into another land of the undead. The unsuspecting armor agent sent the robotic superheroes Machine Man and Jocasta to the original Zombieverse to complete this mission due to their inability to get infected. Once inside, they managed to zap and blast their way through the remaining super zombies, get a blood sample from Fisk uninfected wife Vanessa, and return only to discover that zombie Morbius got a little too hungry waiting and began spreading the infection to the terrified armor agents. The robotic heroes then managed to defeat the munchy Morbius and his gang, saving the 616 dimension from this virus for the time being. However, it is revealed that in the commotion, one of the infected managed to escape the armor facility, leaving the whole main Marvel Universe as their munchy playground. It is then revealed that it was none other than zombie Deadpool, well, his head at least, who escaped with the aid of the OG voodoo Marvel zombie, Simon Garth. The pair then find their way to the bottom of the sea, where they make their way to the island of Taino in the Caribbean. Since Garth was a voodoo-based zombie, his and Deadpool's presence was sensed by the evil shaman Black Talon, who used his power to control Simon and bring the pair to him. Sensing the power from Deadpool's zombified head, Talon then had Garth explain just where it was from. 
Garth then tells Talon all about the Zombieverse and how all of its heroes were defeated, all while Deadpool, who we'll now call Headpool, made fun of Talon's ridiculous chicken costume. We were all thinking it, but Headpool was not afraid to say it. That's my boy right there. Talon, realizing he now had a rather chatty undead weapon of mass destruction on his hands, decided to use it as a bargaining chip, of course to make some quick money. He had been using his voodoo powers to control a militia of zombies, which controlled his major cocaine operation. One of his top coke clients was the mystical villain known as The Hood, whom Talon then contacted to tell him about his recent discovery. So, dude, Black Talon is a chicken dressing, cocaine dealing zombie shaman? Man, I love these obscure Marvel characters. He sounds like a character straight out of Doom Patrol, and I love that. How could you not love Doom Patrol? Talon then proposes selling Headpool to Hood for the nice low price of $100 million. The Hood then uses his resources to collect files from Armor Headquarters, which confirms everything Talon said about the Head and the Zombieverse was all true. Unbeknownst to Talon, Hood was actually a human vessel for the Dark Lord Dormammu. Dormammu knew the danger that such a virus would bring to this world, so he had Hood pay the ransom so they could keep Headpool out of the hands as unstable as someone as Black Talon. Talon and his men then waited for Hood's arrival while they put Headpool in a cute little birdcage as he sang songs to them. Man, I want a little Deadpool head to sing songs to me. Well, luckily you can by ordering the Marvel Legends Deadpool Talking Head, now for $99.99. Cash, credit card, and chimichangas are accepted for him to paint. Hood then shows up with his posse as they go to make the deal, but are soon interrupted by main universe Morbius, who track Deadpool down, along with Jennifer Kale and the Midnight Suns. While the mystic monsters battle each other, Deadpool manages to trick and bite one of Talon's men, where he and Simon escape. Before this battle, the main universe Morbius had created a vaccine that would expose the zombie virus to oxygen, causing the host to explode. Pretty sweet, I know. However, after blasting so many undead with the vaccine, it caused the virus to evolve into an airborne strain that would infect anyone it touched. Okay, that's, that's not sweet. Midnight Sun member Hellstorm then summoned the legit fires of hell to keep the zombie cloud at bay so the heroes could escape. Completely perplexed with the airborne virus threatening their dimension, the heroes debated on what to do. Jennifer Kale then used her magic, mixed with the mud of the Florida swamp, to summon the Man-Thing, who is immune against the virus cloud. Man, Marvel really does have a thing for Florida swamps during these comics. I mean, hey, those things could be magic portals to hellish dimensions for all we know. No way I'm going in there to see though. Those big gators, they could keep their big hell portals. We then cut back to Simon and Headpool, who made their way to a nearby village. As the terrified citizens look on at the scary and smelly sight, the airborne virus cloud approaches and begins to rain infected zombie blood, which melts the villagers' flesh, turning them into violent infected undead. Jennifer Kale then uses her magic to control Man-Thing, whom she pilots through the crimson rain to confront Simon and Headpool. The rain from the cloud then mutates the pair, causing them to fuse, turning them into a bizarre left for dead looking creature. The pair then have a full on monster on monster fight in the blood red rain. Man, how do people even think of stuff like this? A monster swamp man fighting a zombie head fused with a voodoo zombie in the middle of a zombie rainstorm? This is classic stuff, boys. However, as hard as he fought the poisonous precipitation, the rain weakens the Man-Thing, where he is ripped apart by the Deadpool Simon creature. Knowing they did not have many other options left, a frustrated Jennifer Kale then takes a last resort, where she then summons Dormammu and allows him to possess her so they could use his power to defeat the virus. With her newfound hellish power, Jennifer then enters the zombie cloud, where she discovers that there has actually been a living presence controlling it. Much to her surprise, this all-powerful presence was none other than Deadpool himself, who actually had a cute little ghost body in this form and was able to scratch his itchy foot that he just could not reach when he was ahead. A confused Jennifer then remembers Deadpool being the one who attacked her and brought the infection to this world. She then attacks him and defeats the cloud, causing it to dissipate. 
Man, only Deadpool would be capable of such a journey. From everyday run-of-the-mill Canadian assassin, to superhero mercenary, to zombie, to zombie head controlling a sentient zombie cloud. Can't wait for Ryan Reynolds to include all this in his autobiography. It's gonna be great. They know that they'll keep being hunted since they are virus carriers, so Simon makes the hard decision and kills Headpool and turns himself in to the heroes to be brought back into custody. Oh man, I kind of feel bad for Simon. He and Headpool may have almost just ended the world, but they made such a beautiful friendship and he was forced to kill the only person that he ever cared about. No, oh, just kidding. Simon is a true homie to his pal and put Headpool in a boat that he let drift off the sea all while he sang songs into the sunset. Ah, oh, true love. That's how homie should be. Just as we thought the story was ending, it was just beginning. Hope you refueled on snacks, had your bathroom break, because, well, here we go. We then run into our lovable main universe Deadpool, who was offered $2 million by the shady villainous group AIM to retrieve a special package from the Savage Land. Getting money and asking questions later, Deadpool agreed and was launched in a pod from space and blasted to the land below. He is then approached by the mighty Kazar, who upon seeing Deadpool's fashionable and sexy costume, shows him that the island natives had actually constructed a giant statue of him in the middle of the Savage Land. Honored into thinking he had a fan club, Deadpool went in to greet his groupies where he then runs into the sultry Dr. Betty Swanson, who is also assigned by AIM to help Deadpool claim the designated package. Immediately falling in love with the beautiful scientist, Deadpool tried his best to use his suave flirting skills with the woman, only for her to be disgusted and annoyed at her forced co-worker for the time being. Girl, I don't know what you're talking about. This man is beautiful. Upon making contact with the natives, Deadpool's supposed fans then attack and overwhelm the pair, where they proceed to kidnap them. Once they awake, Deadpool and Betty are then taken to the group's leader, who was also their target. This ended up being none other than Headpool, who had found his way to the Savage Land after crashing here in his little sailboat. He was then picked up by the natives and worshipped as a god. Hmm, pretty sweet gig if you ask me. Headpool then noticed the healthy muscular body that our world's Deadpool had and thought it would look much better on him. I mean, hey, the guy has been ahead for a very long time now. He's due for some legs. Headpool's zombie cavemen goons then go in to slice off our hero's noggin, only for them to miss and cut off Deadpool's arm, which he uses to escape and smack them all around with. He then grabs Headpool, where he escapes with Dr. Betty. Upon their escape, the trio then run into a ravenous group of raptors, I mean, of course they would, who they manage to defeat. After their run-in with Jurassic Park, they are then intercepted by Hydra soldiers who are also in pursuit of Headpool. Everyone after the poor little guy. It's like the more bloody and less cute version of the Mandalorian. Oh, who are we kidding? Headpool, he's adorable. Headpool then safely rolls into some nearby bushes as Deadpool is interrogated by and does battle with the Hydra soldiers. However, the troops quickly open fire on our hero, temporarily taking him out of action. You know, at least until his healing factor kicks in. The squad commander then finds the head, excited and intrigued, but just before he could bring it back to base, our boy Kazar leads a giant T-Rex onto the battlefield to chase these intruders out of his homeland. As the dino munches through the Hydra troops like green wrapped candy, the battle heats up even more as Headpool's native groupie warriors then also swarm the battle to retrieve their bodiless king. See, you just don't see loyalty like that anymore. Deadpool then gets his hands on a minigun and sprays through the soldiers as he and them play a nice little game of Headpool football. Our boy Wade Wilson manages to secure the cranium and makes a touchdown where he and Dr. Betty escape. Just as they thought they were safe, they quickly panicked as they were chased by a zombified T-Rex that Headpool had bit sometime during the battle. I don't even have words for this. I think the five-year-olds in us all could absolutely agree that zombie T-Rexes just may in fact be the coolest thing ever. The AIM scientist patiently waiting for Deadpool to finish his mission in the skies above, 
believe that things may have gotten out of hand and decide to play things safe and keep the virus contained by using their satellite to blast into the Savage Land below. The blast just so conveniently manages to directly hit the zombie dino, giving our heroes time to escape. They then find a Hydra ship, where Deadpool knocks out the pilot and takes a sandwich and glass of milk, where they then blast into the skies above. Dr. Betty and Deadpool then get the head safely back to the much surprised AIM scientist, who were shocked to see that the mercenary was successful in his mission. The group then takes Headpool in to be studied, while Deadpool freshens up, ready to claim his reward. However, still being a man of morals, the voices in Deadpool's head then tell him that leaving something as dangerous as Headpool in the hands of these shady scientists was much too dangerous for their world. He then has a change of heart and goes to save his stinky alternate self, only to get intercepted once again by Hydra troops who broke into the AIM ship, not ready to give up their prized possession. Deadpool, however, uses this well-constructed distraction to grab the head, Dr. Betty, and an AIM pilot named Bill, who he forces to pilot an escape ship. They then blow up the remaining Hydra agents and escape back to Earth. Deadpool has the ship take them back to the Florida Swamp so they can return the head back to the Marvel Zombieverse and keep this dimension safe from the hands of the virus forever. As the trio trudge through the murky swamp waters, they are then jump scared by this dimension's Man-Thing, who is out to protect the multiverse portal. They manage to get away from the creature, only to be met once again by more Hydra soldiers. Jeez, how many of these guys are there? However, after the commander's boring villainous monologue, Deadpool quickly cuts off his head and feeds it to Headpool for some lunch. The portal then opens up, revealing the gateway to the Zombieverse. Deadpool opts to go in alone and grabs his little buddy and heads through, promising to get him home and get him a new body. However, the portal, having somewhat of a mind of its own, throws the pair into a weird, almost 90 CGI world where another Captain America S. Deadpool was the leader of the United States of North America. Oh, look at his little vest and helmet! This world sounds awesome! Not being as fun as our Earth's Deadpool, this one captures Deadpool and the head where they interrogate the two. Not ready to give up, Deadpool breaks his containment where this world's version reveals his handsome muscular stature and the two do battle. While the pair were both a good match, our Deadpool proved victorious after playing dead and getting in a cheap shot. He then disguises himself as this alternate Deadpool, grabs the head and escapes through the portal once again, only to get tossed into yet another dimension where Captain America, here called General America, was at war with anti-American rebels. Deadpool and Headpool then look on and see that one of the rebel warriors was none other than an extra curvy female version of them. Thick Deadpool, anyone? Instantly falling in love with the hot lady version of himself faster than Loki did in the Loki show, Deadpool joins Lady Pool and fights against General America. Once they get an opening, Deadpool then whips Headpool at Cap, who proceeds to bite his arm, all while Cap swears at his disbelief at the situation. Man, Steve, Tony Stark would not approve of the language you're using here. They then gang up and beat the snot out of Cap and even cut off his arm before the infection could spread. The Deadpools, getting all hot and bothered after their victory, then proceed to make out, declare it was weird, and never do it again. Man, I think it's safe to say that even Deadpool has better standards than Loki. The portal then opens up again and Deadpool and Headpool escape all while Headpool gnaws on Cap's tasty star-spangled arm. This time, the pair are teleported to the Old West, where they encounter cowboy versions of the X-Men. They then see a Texas outlaw version of themselves, who declares that he was going to take over the town. Having no time for this nonsense, our Deadpool kills Cowboy Deadpool, and they escape once again through the portal. Aw, I wanted to see more of the Old West. Uh, not cool. Once they get through, they then somehow wind up back in the main Marvel Universe. While it seemed like they were gone forever, a confused Dr. Betty and Bill said they were only gone for a few seconds. Just then, 
Jericho Drum appeared, who was the Sorcerer Supreme at this time. He told the Deadpools that since they had both went through the portal at the same time, the universe had focused on them and sent them only two worlds where they were a main focal point. He then realigns the portal to lead them to the Zombieverse so they could complete their mission. Deadpool, confused at this guy being the Sorcerer Supreme, tells him he should grow a mustache like Doctor Strange and prepares to enter the portal. The group is then approached by Man-Thing once again, and instead of taking their chances with the monster, this time Dr. Betty and Bill go through the portal with the Deadpools. Man, either choosing to go to a world filled with zombie superheroes, or staying with the big green swamp monster? Honestly, I think I'm picking the swamp monster, folks. Upon entering the Zombieverse, Headpool was glad to be back in his sweet apocalyptic home. Seconds later, however, the heroes are then immediately jumped by Zombie Tigra, Moon Knight, and Shamrock, who are very excited to see some fresh food after so long. While the trio may have seemed doomed, Deadpool, Bill, and Betty manage to defeat the zombie heroes, all thanks to their guns, wit, and nice convenient plot armor. Don't leave home without it. Sensing the fresh meat, more of the remaining zombie heroes and villains then start sprinting toward Deadpool's direction. He and his buddies manage to get away, where they are then met by a group of survivors led by Professor Veronica Chase. Veronica then takes them to the survivor hideout, where Deadpool and Headpool then spend the next several weeks just chilling, eating snacks, and playing PlayStation. See? That's how you do a zombie apocalypse, folks. However, while things were fun for a while, Deadpool, wanting to flex his mercenary guns, met up with Veronica and Betty to see if they needed any help. Veronica, having a big crush on Deadpool, told him that she was close to finding a cure for the virus but needed a live zombie specimen to see if things worked. Deadpool, being full of great ideas, then strapped Headpool atop of his body and then encountered a group of nearby zombies. Headpool then makes up a lie on the fly how he was able to survive the events after Galactus and that there was no more food left. Just as he leaves, he singles out one of the weakest of the group, the former X-Men Cypher, and whispers to him, telling him that he knew where he could find fresh meat. A few minutes later, the giddy zombie boy then meets Headpool on Headpool, all excited to get some tasty snacks. This ended up of course being a trap by Deadpool and the survivors as they bag the dumb undead X-Man and bring him into custody. With the sample, Veronica is then able to craft a cure for the virus, although the only caveat is that it must be taken within one hour of the infection. The next morning, the Deadpools, Betty and Bill then go to leave, but are then met with Zombie Absorbing Man, Armadillo, and Aguia. Deadpool then uses a bazooka to bring a building down upon the zombies, and the trio get away in a blimp, complete with his name spray painted on the side. The blimp is quickly shot down by Zombie Iceman and Firebird, whom Deadpool and the others manage to defeat. While they fight, Zombie Absorbing Man was able to, well, absorb the skyscraper that Deadpool knocked down on him. He then emerges from the rubble and infects Veronica with the virus, where she then leads him to the remaining survivors, who they gobble up. Deadpool, unaware that his girlfriend became a zombie, hits her up saying that they needed transport. She then tells the gang to meet them there, all ready to get her newly infected hands on another round of snacks. Upon meeting, Deadpool and the gang are ambushed, but the quick-thinking mercenary throws a roll of toilet paper at Absorbing Man, which he takes on the form of, and is then quickly sliced to pieces by Deadpool. Ah, uh, see, it all makes sense now. Now I see why everyone was hoarding toilet paper when the pandemic first broke out. They were just trying to protect themselves against Zombie Absorbing Man. Makes total sense. Genius. The group then approached Zombie Veronica, who threatened to destroy the vaccine she had created when she was still alive. Not having time for this nonsense, Dr. Betty pushed the zombie babe off the building, where Deadpool caught the cure. Headpool and the rest are then met by the remaining AIM scientist in a helicopter who had tracked them to this dimension to claim their prize. Knowing this was the only way out of here, Deadpool cuts a deal with the scientist to give them the head if they give them a ride back to the Florida Swamp so they could re-enter the Nexus portal. The backstabbing AIM agrees, but then quickly takes off with Headpool after they stop for gas. As they fly away, 
Headpool of course keeps on gabbing, where the lead scientist tells him to shut up. The quick-thinking Headpool then bites the man's finger off, infecting him with the virus. Ooh, look who's shutting up now, bro! Panicked that he would soon become undead, the scientist pleads with Headpool to help, where the undead Merc tells him that the cure is with Deadpool and the rest. The reluctant scientist then turn the helicopter around and pick up our happy hero gang. The AIM commander then pleads with Deadpool to cure him, where, seemingly out of character, Deadpool agrees, much to the anger of Betty and Bill. Hey, the guy's a big softy. He can't help it. As the folks make their way to Florida, the AIM commander then remarks that he begins to feel rather strange. It is then revealed that he was still very much infected and Deadpool is just timing things to see how long it would take for an infected person to turn. The quickly zombifying scientist then asks Deadpool just what he gave him before as the cure, which he then tells him that he drank a ton of Fresca before and peed in a vial. Man, only Deadpool would have someone drink his own pee. You see Deadpool at a party and he offers you a drink? I think you should just walk the other way. The man then fully turns where Deadpool said he had all the data he needed and smacked him out of the helicopter where he splat it to the ground below. Deadpool and the others then make their way back to the Florida swamp and trudge their way to the portal. It is then revealed that when they teleported to this earth, they had come here during the events of Marvel Zombies 3 where we see the original zombie Deadpool complete with his body getting ready to make his way to the main Marvel Universe. Now, let's not think about it too hard. Time and dimensional travel can be confusing, folks. Let's just focus on Deadpool. Knowing that trouble is on its way, Deadpool then decided to put his plan into motion where he had Dr. Betty cut off his arm, which he proceeded to put on backwards, and sew Headpool on top of it so he could literally have eyes in the back of his head and fight off multiple zombies at once. The unorthodoxness of Deadpool's plans never ceases to amaze me. But hey, that's what makes Deadpool Deadpool, folks. Literally, no other Marvel superhero would think of this. Our heroes then manage to cut the zombies down to one, leaving just the original zombie Deadpool left. Betty and Bill then jump him from behind, where they blast the poor dude's head to pieces. R.I.P. Deadpool. Well, this one anyway. Fulfilling his promise, our Deadpool then picks up Headpool and grafts him onto his now vacant body of the recently deceased zombie pool. Upon feeling his hunger take over again, Headpool then leaps through the portal without saying thank you and then confronts the heroes as he did right at the beginning of Marvel Zombies 3. However, dimension travel being as weird as it is, causes things to play out in a paradox with him being defeated once again where he is chopped up by the fan reduced to a head, and placed in the boat again by Simon. Man, that sucks. It's like Zombie Groundhog Day, minus Bill Murray. Just as he thought things were over, our Deadpool then enters the portal to go back home, where he is then intercepted by the cosmic being known as the Contemplator, who is kind of like the Watcher, but is actually allowed to do stuff. He then tells Deadpool of a cosmic evil threatening the universe, and that only he could stop it. He then has Deadpool form a team of alternate versions of himself, which consisted of Lady Deadpool from before, a child version of himself named Kidpool, a doggy version named Dogpool, and last but not least, our boy Headpool. Upon floating in his little boat, Headpool is picked up by pirates, who is then brought to a comically mad scientist hunter, who planned to do all sorts of weird experiments to it. Just before pirate Dr. Frankenstein could get to work, our Deadpool showed up killed them all, and saved Headpool, who even found a little propeller hat that would let him get around. Dude may not have legs, but he may have just found the next best thing. The group then form the Deadpool Corps, who go throughout space and time, conquering all sorts of evil, including mind-controlling mime hats. See, someone's gotta take the job the Avengers won't do. However, the time-hopping fun for Headpool would soon end, when a rogue Deadpool formed what was known as the Evil Deadpool Corps, where he set an assassin after Headpool and the others. The killer hunted Headpool down, threw his head in a microwave and cooked it until it exploded, resulted in a gooey and violent end for our favorite zombie mercenary with half a mouth. Scarlet, Scarlet Witch. Witch Zombie Scarlet Witch, 
like most of the heroes and villains of this dimension, was infected with an alien virus that transformed them into flesh-hungry savages. She made her first appearance in Ultimate Fantastic Four number 22 back in 2005. She comes from Earth 2149, but her origins prior to the outbreak were very similar to her main universe counterpart from Earth 616. Sadly, this all came to an immediate halt one fateful day when Ash Williams from the Evil Dead series mistakenly found his way to this Earth after being smacked here by a zombie version of the century at the gates of heaven. Knowing he basically had zombie Superman hot on his tail, Ash knew he would need some superpowered intervention. He then found his way to Avengers Mansion where he skipped formalities and got their attention immediately by blowing up their intercom. Subtle Ash, I like it. Confused and upset that her favorite voice box was now in worse shape than her brother Pietro in Age of Ultron, Wanda and the other Avengers greeted Ash at the front door to see just what this crazy guy needed so badly. Ash tried his best to explain the severity of the situation, but due to things not getting off on the right hand, the heroes thought the dude was crazy and even made fun of him. Really? You're laughing. This man came from another dimension warning about impending doom and you're laughing. Getting frustrated at these colorful clowns making light of the situation, Ash begins to yell only for Wanda to cool off that hot temper of his by teleporting him into a nearby pond. Come on, Wanda. I'd expect this from some of the other Avengers, but you? Girl, you're better than this. Thinking that Ash could be potentially dangerous, Colonel America then had Spider-Man web the poor man up and take him away to the authorities. Thinking that was that, Wanda and the rest headed back to the mansion for some snacks, only to be met by Jarvis, who warned the gang of mysterious purple lightning gathering in the middle of Manhattan. The gang then fired up the Quinjet to investigate, and instead of it being a sweet appearance of rain from Mortal Kombat, Cap and the rest were dumbfounded to see that Ash was correct, for hot in a crater in the middle of the city was Zombie Sentry. Honestly, whatever happened next is on y'all. Y'all had your chance to listen, but nobody wanted to pay Ash any mind. Upon being approached, the hungry zombie then woke up and ripped through Cap and the rest, transforming them into flesh-hungry, but still intelligent undead. The fresh out the box zombie Avengers then got a hankering for some New York street flesh and began immediately assaulting and eating every citizen in sight. Horrified at the hellish transformation her friends had just went through, Wanda used her powerful abilities to temporarily freeze the zombie heroes, giving her time to escape. Later on, she finds her man Vision, where they both meet with Nick Fury and the uninfected supers aboard the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier, where they plan a strategy on how to contain this quickly growing threat. The scientific brains of Reed Richards and Tony Stark were tasked with finding a cure and building a multiversal portal to escape with, while Wanda was sent with the other powerful heroes as a ground team to combat the Horde and rescue survivors. I love how Wanda looks in this panel. She doesn't even necessarily look scared of Zombie Spider-Man, she just looks appalled and offended. Most likely how bad this dude's breath probably smells. Here's a Tic Tac Spidey. No, no, no. I insist. Despite the great fight they put up, Scarlet Witch and the rest were soon overrun by the undead army, causing them to retreat. To make matters worse, aboard the helicarrier, Reed Richards picks now of all times to go crazy after losing his children to Zombie She-Hulk. He then purposely infects he and his other Fantastic Four members with the virus, where they infect Tony Stark and plan to go after the multiverse teleporter. Seriously bro? You wanna go crazy? Do that on your own time. Your own company hours, mate. Before they could get access to the portal, Nick Fury had Thor destroy it, but was then promptly killed by the Frightful Four, who infected the remaining heroes aboard the ship, leaving all hope of victory pretty much in the dust. We then cut to our boy Ash, who had teamed up with the X-Men Dazzler as they journeyed through the city streets in pursuit of a magical book called the Necronomicon, for Ash believed that its power would be helpful in combating the hungry heroes. Their travels then lead them to a rather bizarre and meta moment where Ash found his variant of this Earth, getting his brains chomped out by none other than a zombified Howard the Duck? <laughs> zombie ducks? How does that even work? Is it weird to still think that he's kind of cute, despite being a zombie? J. 
Just before Hungry Howard could get his stubby hands on our heroes, Ash activated his chainsaw, ripping the poor little guy in half. Oh man, you, you ruined his little tie! C come on, Ash, you didn't have to do that! Proud of himself for saving the day, Ash took a moment to revel in his awesomeness, only to see that Zombie Howard was much more resilient than they all realized. Just before he could bite down with his bloody duck bill, our poor webbed foot friend was then frozen and turned to glass by our girl Wanda, who came in right in the nick of time. Whoa, now we got a life-size glass Howard the Duck statue? Can we keep it? I can't wait to- Sadly, before I could keep the glass mallard and sell him on eBay, he was sadly kicked to pieces by Ash. Oh man, first he cut his tie and now you're this? Oh, bro, I love you, but I can't say I'm happy with you right now. Wanda then introduces herself to the heroes where Ash announced his plan to find the Necronomicon. Her and Dazzler then decide that the best place to look for such an artifact would be Doctor Strange's Sanctum Sanctorum, which was nearby. Upon kicking the door down, the trio are then met by a very sad sight, which was poor Wong being devoured by a zombified Doctor Druid. Rest in peace, buddy. You didn't ask for this. You just tried to stay out of everyone's business, and you went out with somebody all up in yours. We'll miss you, man. The undead doctor then apologizes for his actions, claiming that the virus was so powerful that he was defenseless against it. Ash then tries to reason with the guy, telling him that there was a way to stop this. Regaining his composure for a moment, Dr. Druid walks with Ash and the others and leads them to the library so they could find the book. Getting what he needed and not taking chances, Ash put his boomstick to the back of the doctor's head and fired, turning it into a fine bloody mess on the ground. We need more people like Ash in zombie movies. Dude is not about to risk the whole group just because he feels like being nice. Ash is here to play hardball, and I'm here for it. Upon locating the library, Ash and Wanda come across another evil living book with knowledge of the Necronomicon's whereabouts. Threatening to turn the thing into paper mache unless he got his answers, the book then tells Ash that the artifact was in Doctor Doom's country of Latveria. Still having access to the Avengers Quinjet, Wanda leads Ash and Dazzler to it, where she powers it up and pilots them to the supervillain's mysterious country. Upon arrival at Doom's castle, he informs the gang that things were even more dire than they realized. He relays to them that during this time, Wanda's brother Quicksilver was out battling the undead in the city streets, where he came across, who he thought was his sister, being attacked by a group of zombies. He then sped in to save her and dashed away, only to see Scarlet Witch turn a nice shade of sickly blue, where it is revealed it was actually zombie mystique in disguise. Man, you thought regular zombies were bad. You may have thought superhero zombies were bad, but how about superhero shapeshifting zombies who can trick you into thinking that they're still humans? Uh-uh, not even gonna think about that one. Upon being infected by the monster mutant, the now zombified Quicksilver then dashed all over the globe, eating hundreds of people and infecting all the remaining Earth supers, turning the virus into a global pandemic. With the Earth population nearly devastated, Doctor Doom revealed to Scarlet Witch and the others that he was harboring the remaining Latvarian citizens. He and his scientists had spent this time to create a portal of their own that would lead these people to salvation in another dimension. Ash then told Doom that he needed access to his library to get the Necronomicon so he could put its power to use and end this plague. Doom tells the dude that it would be of no use for this virus was alien in nature, not magical, therefore the book would have no effect. Not about to just give up, Ash argued with Doom and was knocked out by a Doombot and was carried away. Later on, Wanda came to Ash's rescue where she told him that she would help him sneak into the library and retrieve the artifact. Just then, another Doombot attacks the pair, but Wanda, being OP, makes quick work of the oversized action figure. Using his creativity to his advantage, Ash then takes off the bot's clothes and disguises himself as Doctor Doom, where he proudly marches right to the library. Ash, you been hitting the gym, bro? You're looking pretty buff in that armor, my man. Ash, making Ziz proud on the zombie apocalypse. 
He then locates the book and threatens for it to help him or else. The evil book then only smiles and confirms what Doom said before of the virus's alien origin and that its magic would be of no use of putting things to an end. Distraught at coming so far just to think that he had failed, Ash then meets back up with Wanda only to see that the castle was being bombarded by some uninvited house guests which so happened to be an entire army of zombie superheroes gathering outside for the survivor's supper. The combined might of the heroes managed to break through Doom's near impenetrable walls where they ganged up on the good doctor. Amidst the chaos, Ash calls out to Wanda so they could use this distraction to escape, only to his horror to see that Wanda had gotten jumped by a zombie Punisher who took out a huge chunk of her back. Man Marvel, you really like to see Wanda suffer, first losing her brother, then her husband, then her fake husband and kids in WandaVision. What she ever do to you? With her last breath, Scarlet Witch pleads for Ash to find the Necronomicon and put an end to this hellish plague. A defeated Ash then told her that he already consulted the book and it could not help. However, Brilliant struck our hero once again as he bolted back to Doom's library. While the Necronomicon could not cure the plague, he worked with it to do the next best thing. Together, the two summoned a Deadeye army of the leftover half-eaten bodies left behind by the zombie Avengers. This new zombie army then stormed the castle and went to war with the heroes to give Doom enough time to get the remaining humans through the portal. While they were cut down pretty quickly, it gave the former villain just enough time to get everyone through where he then promptly destroyed the machine. Eventually, the now zombified Wanda and remaining zombie heroes soon found themselves low on that zesty human meat. Thinking they're about to waste away, they are then met by the Silver Surfer who came to announce the arrival of his master Galactus. Seeing this threat as more of a dinner invitation, the zombies managed to defeat the Surfer where a select group of heroes got to eat him. Those that did ended up inheriting his sweet cosmic powers and then used it to heat and eat their fellow zombie friends. They even went on to use them to kill and consume the mighty Galactus who showed up to check on his silver boy. After devouring the fashionable giant spaceman, the zombies then inherited his powers as well which allowed them to journey throughout space gobbling up every living thing in sight. They kind of became like one of those traveling chef shows except uh, they're coming to eat you, not the great local food in your town. Uh, can't say that's a show uh, I'd want to be part of. While the undead space avengers were out pillaging the galaxy, it is revealed that Wanda had survived her encounter with them and eventually made her way to work under zombie kingpin who had created a posh little cannibal empire for himself. He worked with zombie jackal to create a human cloning program so that way those working for him would have an unlimited supply of food. With the aid of a near brain dead zombie doctor strange, Fisk was able to find out about the main Marvel Universe of Earth-616. He then sent a small team of zombies into that dimension as a distraction so they could start the invasion. Wanting to contain this threat fast, the secret government group Armor sent in the robotic heroes Machine Man and Jocasta to get a blood sample from a human of the zombieverse so they could create a vaccine. The pair managed to slice, dice, and blast their way through Kingpin's stronghold where they encountered his still human wife Vanessa. They then got a sample from the most likely very traumatized woman and headed back to their dimension. Before they could get back, the pair discovered the very disturbing and disgusting sight of Kingpin's men having a nice little human clone dinner party. Seeing that these clones were treated like nothing more than objects like the machines of his earth, this caused Machine Man to fill up with rage. He then jumped out the window upon the dinner guest, opening fire onto the hungry horde. D please Disney, we need to show up this guy immediately, he's, he's just awesome! During the battle, he and Jocasta got separated as she heads back to the portal to get the sample back to Earth-616. Going full Doom Guy and completely obliterating several undead in his path, Machine Man eventually comes across Zombie Doctor Strange, projecting the window to Earth-616. 
Kingpin then reveals himself, and just like Fisk of any Earth, gives a long-winded monologue about his villainous plan. He tells Machine Man that he actually had an undercover agent in Earth-616, which was Zombie Morbius, disguised as the real Morbius, and that the vaccine that the robot heroes were sent to retrieve was actually all a ruse, so Morbius could inject the other heroes of this other Earth and spread the virus there. Man, not gonna lie, that's actually kinda brilliant! Smart zombies? Definitely way scarier than typical brainless ones. Thanking Kingpin for graciously revealing the whole plan, Machine Man proceeds to escape where he is attacked by Zombie Ghost Rider. Not having any time for this nonsense, Machine Man slices off the dude's head and calls out to Jocasta via comline. However, he discovers that the call could not go through because our girl Zombie Wanda had her man Vision strapped to a machine in Kingpin's lair, which he then used him to block all outside communication. Man, Vision can't get a break either. Dude's died like a million times, and now in the zombie apocalypse, he's basically used as a living caller ID blocker? I'm sorry, bro. You deserve better than this. Needing to get back and warn Jocasta about the coming invasion, Machine Man steals Ghost Rider's motorcycle and rides it through Kingpin's stronghold and blows up the cloning lab, presumably killing Wanda and Vision in the process. Juggernaut Zombie Juggernaut, like most of the heroes and villains of his world, was infected with a bizarre multiversal virus that turned them into flesh-eating monsters. He made his first appearance in the pages of Ultimate Fantastic Four number 23 back in 2005. He comes from Earth 2149, but his muscular origins pre-infection were very similar to his main universe counterparts from Earth 616. This all changed though one very scary day when a zombie version of the hero known as the Sentry came to the planet and infected the Avengers converting them to his hungry zombie army. The freshly cannibalized heroes then stormed the streets and ripped into the New York citizens, turning the entire city into a tasty flesh buffet. The non-infected heroes tried their best to fight off the zombies, but the power of the virus proved to be too great, and the remaining heroes were either infected or killed. The disease would quickly become a global pandemic, resulting in the vast majority of the Earth's population being decimated. Without much grub left, the starving supers thought they would go hungrier than Oliver Twist, until one day they were met by the Silver Surfer, who arrived on behalf of his master Galactus. The Herald went to give his usual ominous speech on how the world would soon be consumed by his giant purple boss man, only for the zombies to get bored of all the small talk, and went straight to business to gobble the poor dude up. Shiny Johnny Sins tried to fight back with his cosmic energy, but powerful as he was, he was soon overpowered and consumed by a group of hungry heroes. The ones who got to eat the poor man realized they got his powers, which they used to roast their fellow friends hotter than Miles Teller and Top Gun, who they proceeded to eat. Upon eating their comrades, the zombies are soon met by Galactus, who showed up, rather curious as to the whereabouts of the surfer. Upon engaging the big man, the zombies manage to combine their newfound cosmic powers into one concentrated blast, where they manage to send the world eater to the ground, all while Juggernaut looked on with the hungry mob. Dude looks rather impressed, and I can't say I blame him. As the big man fell, we see our boy Kane once again, who was nearly crushed to death by the colossal titan. Once Galactus hit the ground, Juggernaut and his homies were overjoyed, thinking they were about to take a nice trip to Cannibal Golden Corral. However, they were soon stopped by Cosmic Colonel America, who told them that they put in the work for this hunt and that it was theirs. Not willing to pass this food up, Juggernaut and the other villains then went to war with Cap and his not-so-merry men. Coming face to face with Wolverine, Marco taunted poor Logan, telling him that he could not pierce his impenetrable armor with his claws, and mocked him for only having one pair after losing his arm in battle. Wasting no time, Wolverine chimed right back telling the big bully that not all of him was armored, where he then proceeded to jam his claws right into Juggernaut's mouth. 
He then activated his cosmic powers and proceeded to flick the big boy's head off like it was a giant pimple. I honestly feel kind of bad for Juggernaut, guys. He knew it was all over once he got those claws shoved in his mouth, and honestly, he looks so sad. <laughs> I kind of want to give him a hug. While the zombie Juggernaut of Earth 2149 would not fare too well, his zombie variant would not do too much better on Earth 13264. This Earth was part of Battleworld, which was created after Doctor Doom got the power of a god and merged several realities into one where he had the supers of different worlds go to war with each other. Part of Battleworld was called the Deadlands, which was a variation of the Zombieverse from Earth 2149. It is here that we find the monster hunter Elsa Bloodstone, who made her way through this violent wasteland. In her travels, she comes across a human girl who she vows to keep safe. As they made their way to the shield where they would be safe, the pair comes face to face with this dimension zombie juggernaut, who clearly had been skipping arm dead. The hellish foe then managed to get the jump on Elsa, where he planned to turn her into lunch. However, fate would be on Elsa's side as the mysterious bloodstone in her chest activated and shot out a beam of crimson energy at the dude, frying his head to a crisp, which she then proceeded to stomp to pieces. Man, Marvel Zombies is not too kind of Juggernaut's noggin. Leave my big dumb boy alone. Quicksilver. Zombie Quicksilver, like most of the superpowered beings of this dimension, was infected with a mysterious illness that transformed them into bloodthirsty monsters. He made his first appearance in Ultimate Fantastic Four number 23 back in 2005. He comes from Earth 2149, but his origins prior to the outbreak was very similar to that of his main universe variant from Earth 616. This all changed however one terrible day when a zombified version of the century made his way to this Earth after entering a portal at the gates of heaven. Ash Williams, yes the same guy from the Evil Dead movies, tried to stop the super zombie but was smacked into this Earth as well. Knowing time was of the essence, Ash tried to warn the Avengers about it, but they thought he was crazy and had Spider-Man take him to the authorities. However, of course Ash was proved right when Sentry showed up, began viciously attacking the heroes, and infected them with the zombie virus. Honestly, serves them right. Come on Avengers, you guys have fought aliens, monsters, spirits, but all of a sudden you're not going to believe in zombies? What's wrong with you? The now undead supers then began ripping into the nearby New York residents, munching down on their tasty brains. As the carnage spread, Nick Fury assembled Quicksilver and all the non-infected heroes so they could formulate a plan on how to stop things. The Speedster was part of a ground team sent to combat the Horde and rescue survivors, while the scientific minds of Reed Richards and Tony Stark were tasked with finding a cure and creating a multiversal portal that would allow the survivors to escape to another dimension. Just as things couldn't get bad enough with all the heroes having to kill their former friends, in classic zombie movie tradition, they of course did. On one of his missions, Quicksilver came across his sister Scarlet Witch, about to be consumed by zombie plat cat and arrows. Like any good brother would, Pietro rushed in to save his sis and sped away. As they made it to safety, Wanda revealed she wasn't quite feeling herself when she actually ended up being Zombie Mystique in disguise. What's wrong, Pietro? Didn't see that coming? Oh, come on guys, you know I had to make that joke sometime in this video. To fuel his now speedy meat-hungry metabolism, the now zombified Quicksilver then dashed all over the globe, eating to his heart's content. It was during this time that he also infected the other country's heroes, thereby causing a global zombie pandemic. Yeah guys, I don't think a mask is going to protect us from this one. With the Earth left in ruin, things then bring us to the former villain Doctor Doom, who is harboring survivors at his castle in Latveria. Ash Williams, along with the X-Men Dazzler and the real Scarlet Witch, also made it here where Doom revealed that he and a scientist were also working on a multiversal portal of their own that would allow these survivors to escape to another world. Just before the gang could breathe easy, they are then greeted by some very unwelcome company in the form of an entire superpowered undead legion of heroes 
who sniffed out the survivor's stash. Just inviting yourselves over for dinner? How rude! I don't care if you're zombies or not, no one likes a mooch. To give the remaining humans time to escape, our boy Ash Williams made his way to Dr. Doom's library where he found the evil living book called the Necronomicon. He used its power to summon a zombie army of his own, which went to war with the undead Avengers. Tough as they were, those deadites were cut down pretty easily by the supers, but that was A-OK -okay because they were simply a distraction to give Doom just enough time to get the survivors through the portal, which he promptly destroyed. Being the tenacious little cannibal he was, Zombie Reed Richards did not let this stop him as he used the parts from Doom's wrecked machine to repair the one that Tony Stark had initially created. He was then able to use it to communicate with a younger version of himself from the Ultimate Dimension. Being the impressionable youngster he was, young Reed was tricked into coming to the zombie dimension where he quickly learned that it was indeed a trap. This Reed definitely needs to watch more Star Wars because Admiral Akbar definitely would know that this was indeed a trap. Upon entering this world, Reed is immediately attacked by the zombie horde, but is eventually saved by Magneto, who leads him to the group of survivors that he was protecting. Young Reed tells Magneto and the group about his world, and they formulate a plan to get back to his teleporter so they can escape. Just before they could play things smart, they are then sniffed out by zombie Wolverine, who leads a gang of hungry boys in the subway after them. Magneto then smacks the zombies with an old subway train, and they head outside, only to get a nice warm welcome by Quicksilver and a whole army of supers. Aw, oh, they look so happy! They're superheroes! We're saved, right guys? Right guys? Just before the speedster and the others could chow down, they are all then quickly blinded by Ultimate Susan Storm, who arrived to this world and rendered their optic nerves temporarily invisible. I mentioned this back in the Fantastic Four video, but this is one of the coolest demonstrations of Sue's powers that I have ever seen. Sue Storm, definitely a GOAT Marvel character. The heroes then make their way to the portal and plan to go through. Knowing that the door needed to be sealed off, Magneto stayed behind in this world to destroy the machine, keeping the multiverse safe. Upset at Magneto for shutting down the multiverse kitchen, the nearby zombies ganged up on the poor mutant and tore him apart. R.I.P. bro, we'll never forget you and those awesome frosty locks of yours. The zombie heroes then kicked back, wondering where their next meal would come from, only to suddenly be greeted by the shiniest bald man ever, the Silver Surfer. Acting on behalf of his master Galactus, the Surfer announced to the zombies that their time had come, for Galactus would soon arrive and consume the planet. Not listening to a word this tasty looking man just said, the zombies attacked. The surfer tried his best to fight back with his awesome cosmic powers, but even they could not stop a rampaging zombie hulk who leapt in and bit the dude's head off. A select group of heroes then got to nibble on the surfer, where they discovered that they inherited his sweet powers. They then used these abilities to have a nice zombie barbecue, where they cooked up all their zombie friends and gobbled them up as well. Man, I cannot imagine how that smelled. Just imagine the worst B.O. on a hot summer day, ramped up by 100. That's probably what a cooking zombie smells like. Just as they finish their stank and fried chicken, they're then greeted by Galactus, who came to check in on his boy. Seeing a big old tasty purple pork rind, the gang combine their new powers to defeat Galactus, who they chowed down on as well. Man, seeing them knock the big boy down like that kind of makes me think of that old Pikmin game on GameCube, except much less cute and much more blood and gore everywhere. You know what? I'll stick with Pikmin. Upon eating the poor big man, the cosmic zombies then doubled their might where they inherited Galactus's powers and his sweet costume and went throughout the galaxy pillaging all the fleshy eats that there were to be had. While most of the undead were eaten by the Galactus zombies, there was a large group that managed to survive, Quicksilver being one of them. He and the others then allied themselves under the guidance of Zombie Kingpin, who had built a nice little lucrative business for himself with Zombie Jackal. Together, the pair used Jackal's brilliant mind to create a human cloning program that resulted in unlimited food. Now, this is the most disgusting thing ever. 
But hey, gotta give Fisk credit. Zombie apocalypse or not, this dude always hustling for the next big thing. As he built his zombie empire, Fisk and his men discovered the barely functioning body of Doctor Strange, who had his head crushed by Magneto during a fight. Despite being a floating slobbering fool, Strange still proved quite useful as he could cast a spell that would allow Fisk to look into other worlds. One dimension that they were able to find was one very close by which actually happened to be the main Marvel Universe from Earth-616. It is here that they were able to spy on the armor facility, which is kind of like S.H.I.E.L.D., except they protect other realities from each other. With this data, they were able to discover that there was the nexus of realities in the swamps of Florida that would allow them to access this Earth. At this time, the main Marvel Universe Morbius, the living vampire, was one of the head scientists for Armor. Kingpin then sent Zombie Morbius through the portal where he made his way to Armor, beat up his main Marvel Universe self, and locked him in a room where he took over his role and worked undercover through the facility. He even used the fake little mouthpiece to cover up his nasty zombie mouth. These guys think of everything! The next part of the plan involved sending Zombie Deadpool in to create a distraction so Armor would become aware of the zombie threat. Wanting to contain things and create a vaccine to protect themselves, undercover brother Zombie Morbius proposed they needed a blood sample from a human from the zombieverse so he could create the supposed protection needed. This of course was all a ruse so Morbius could mass produce the virus which would be injected into this world's heroes, turning Earth-616 into another hell on Earth. The robotic heroes Machine Man and Jocasta were sent into the zombieverse to get the sample due to their inability to become infected. And hey, they just look cool! After blasting and zapping their way through Kingpin's rotten men, they came across Fisk's uninfected wife Vanessa, who they got the blood sample from. As they leave, the pair come across a rather twisted dinner party Fisk threw for the zombie and humans, which consisted of some freshly baked clones. Upon seeing their mangled bloody bodies tossed aside like the machines on his earth, this caused Machine Man to take pity on the clones. He then leaps through a window, and in true savage fashion, begins using all of his abilities to the fullest, laying waste to dozens of the zombies. Dude is like emo Inspector Gadget, and I'm totally here for it. Machine Man then eventually found his way to where Doctor Strange was being held and noticed the open window to his world. This then revealed himself and in true villainous fashion, told Machine Man his whole plan. Not standing for the typical bad guy nonsense, Machine Man proceeded to escape. He was attacked by Zombie Ghost Rider, but promptly sliced the dude's flame and head off, took his bike, and blew up the cloning lab. Petition for Machine Man to get his own show or movie ASAP. Furious at his plans falling apart before his very eyes, Kingpin sent Quicksilver and his other zombie speedsters after the robot hero. Cruising down the street in Ghost Rider's motorcycle, Machine Man is soon caught up by Zombie Whizzer, only for Machine Man to open fire on him, causing him to run over his arm, severing it right off. Due to physics, you know, being physics, the zombie then rolls under the bike, being turned into a fine tomatoey zombie paste. The fresh roadkill causes Machine Man to lose control of the bike, which then blows up, killing Quicksilver and the other speedsters in a massive explosion. That's gotta be the coolest thing ever. Dude steals Ghost Rider's motorcycle GTA style, blows up a zombie cloning lab, and then blows up several zombie speedsters who were chasing him? Machine Man, quickly revving up to be my favorite underrated Marvel character. Professor, Professor X. X Zombie Professor X like most of the heroes and villains of his dimension, was infected with an alien virus that turned them into rotting flesh-hungry beasts. He was first mentioned in the pages of Marvel Zombies Dead Days back in 2007. He comes from Earth 2149, but his mutant origins pre-infection were very similar to the well-dressed floaty chairman we all know and love from the main Marvel Universe of Earth 616. Things quickly got even more disturbing than the events of Logan one scary day when a zombie version of the hero called the Sentry came to the Earth and infected the Avengers with the alien plague. 
The virus immediately overtook the heroes and turned them into zombies, where they used their powers to rip into the flesh of every New York citizen that they could find. The virus would spread like wildfire, where it went from Manhattan to the grounds of Professor X's school in Westchester. As the X-Men battled the zombified Alpha Flight, a horrified storm remarked that while they weren't looking, the cannibals stormed the X-Mansion, where they tore the poor professor to pieces. Man, Marvel, what do you have against this poor man dying in horribly brutal ways? Dude is in a wheelchair! Leave Patrick Stewart alone! Things would get completely out of hand on this Earth, which would result in the majority of Earth's heroes becoming infected. A now zombified beast in Reed Richards would even use the late professor's machine Cerebro and reprogram it so instead of finding mutants, it would find any remaining humans left for them to eat. While the Professor X of this Earth would not last very long, his variant would not fare much better once the virus eventually found its way to another dimension called Earth-Z, which was a world very similar to Earth-2149 before the pandemic broke out. Heroes like Spider-Man would try to control their hunger and be a hero again here, but the power of the virus was too great, and they lashed out, spreading the deadly disease to yet another world. Before the outbreak, this world's Hulk had been exiled to space by this Professor X and the Illuminati, very similar to the events of World War Hulk on Earth-616. Things would be quite different though once the virus reached space and infected Hulk, who set his very hungry eyes on Earth. As he made his way back to the planet, the big green cannibal started helping himself to everybody in sight, much to the shock of Professor X and the other Illuminati members. Seeing that he had gone too far, the group sent the most powerful hero they knew, the Sentry, to stop the rampaging monster. As they duked it out in the streets, Sentry hit Hulk so hard that it caused him to revert back into puny zombie Bruce Banner. Having pity on the dude, Sentry 2 changed back into his human form and tried to help him, only for it to be a trick where Banner chomped down on him, infecting him with a virus. Man, only thing worse than a zombie Hulk is a creepy conniving zombie Bruce Banner. Stay away from him, folks. The hungry zombie bros would then help themselves to an all-you-can-eat buffet, which soon resulted in this Earth being completely devastated, just like Earth 2149. Soon enough, the only zombie heroes left were Sentry and a handful of others who had formed a gruesome Avengers team of their own. It is revealed that they too were using Cerebro to find humans like in the original dimension, except on this Earth things were a bit more gory, where they had a zombified Professor X impaled on spikes, permanently wired to the machine to give a live feed of any hint of someone with a pulse. Man, honestly, that's a fate worse than death. Kinda makes all those times he died on screen not so bad. R.I.P. Charles. Magneto Magneto, like everyone else from his dimension, came face to face with a deadly alien virus that turned them into blood-hungry savages. He comes from Earth-2149, but his mutant origins pre-infection were very similar to that of his main universe counterpart from Earth-616. Of course that all changed one bad day when a zombie version of the Sentry came to Earth and tore through the Avengers, infecting them with the virus. Transforming almost immediately, the zombified heroes then dashed through the city streets, completely consuming any poor human who got in their way. While the origins of the virus are quite mysterious, we get a bit of a deeper look under the veil as we see our boy Magneto aboard his ship, Asteroid M. Looking upon the carnage on Earth from his monitors, the mutant expresses deep regret to his right-hand man, Fabian Cortez. It is here that we found out good old Mags had made a deal with an unnamed being to allow the zombified sentry to come to Earth thinking this virus would only kill humans, allowing mutants to reign free, only to discover that the plague affected both parties the same way, thus dooming the planet. Feeling absolutely horrible that he had unleashed hell on Earth, Magneto prepared his shuttle to head back down to the planet so he could help save who was left and hopefully right his wrongs. So guys, uh, cool as Magneto is, 
he's kind of to blame for this whole thing. This is one bad guy plan that went a little too far. Upon arriving to the planet, Max witnessed the disease's effects firsthand when he came across his fellow rivals, the X-Men, battling an infected Alpha Flight on the ground at Professor Xavier's school. Having discovered that his longtime friend Charles Xavier had been ripped apart by the hordes, Magneto wasted no time as he summoned the closest pieces of nearby metal he could find and then whipped them into the heads of the infected Alpha Flight members, killing them right on the spot. The Magnetic Master then informed his former enemies that now was not the time to show compassion and that it was either kill or be killed. Wolverine then called the dude out for talking to them like this and asked just what he was doing here. Magneto then responded that he saved their lives and that they must now repay the favor by joining him in the fight to save who they could. Putting their differences aside, the mutants then joined together in the streets as they took the fight to the Hungry Hordes. Eventually, Nick Fury gathered the likes of Magneto and the other non-infected heroes he could find aboard the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier so they could strategize on how to end this threat once and for all. Scientists like Tony Stark and Reed Richards were charged with finding a cure and a way out of this dimension, while Magneto was tasked with helping lead the assault on the undead in the streets below and rescue survivors. Hard as they fought though, the heroes were soon overrun, being either killed or infected, causing Magneto and a small group of remaining supers to retreat. Having failed in their mission, Magneto would go into hiding as the infection spread worldwide, causing the vast majority of the Earth's population to be devastated. Prior to the virus becoming a pandemic, Tony Stark was working on a teleporter that would allow the non-infected to escape to an alternate world. While things would look hopeful for the living once Tony completed the machine, Reed Richards would pick now of all times to go crazy after losing his children to an uninfected She-Hulk. He would then infect his fellow Fantastic Four members, who in turn infected him. The now Frightful Four would then tear through the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier where they would infect Tony and set their starving sights on the teleporter and get access to the multiverse. However, Nick Fury had other plans where he wheeled the device to the back of the facility where he sealed off the doors. Meeting up with a few of the heroes who had regrouped with Magneto from the battle below, Fury then had Thor destroy the machine to lock these hellish beings in this dimension to starve. Thor then obliged and brought the wrath of Asgard down on the machine, but not before Reed and the rest got through the room, infecting everyone present. Not about to let some wrecked multiverse portal ruin his hungry little day, Reed then had the zombies bring the remaining parts of the device back to his lab, where he would work on repairing it. He would then manage to fix it to the point where he would be able to use it to communicate with a younger version of himself from the Ultimate Dimension, who he managed to trick into coming to the Zombieverse. Upon setting foot in this wasteland, young Reed quickly realized he was catfished, where he was immediately attacked by the zombified Fantastic Four. Barely escaping with his life, young Reed managed to get away to the nearby sewers. Thinking he was in the clear, our boy was sadly mistaken, where he was met by a whole harem of hungry heroes. Before they could turn Reed into a living Lunchable, the zombie supers were then terrified to see today's forecast, which consisted of an entire city block's worth of cars floating in the skies above. The auto assault came raining down, exploding upon the zombies, killing and injuring several in the process. The attack is then revealed to have come from our boy Magneto, who had saved poor Reed, all while looking extra yoked and handsome. Hey, apocalypse or not, Magneto is definitely not skipping leg day. Upon saving the young scientist, Max then takes the young Reed to the subway, where he introduces him to a small group of survivors who he managed to save from the zombies. I mean, it's like three people, but still counts for something. Upon noticing that this Reed looks a lot like his world's Reed Richards, although a bit younger and not a zombie, Magneto asked the dude what his deal was, where he then revealed that he was in fact Reed from another world. 
Knowing that the multiverse portal was still open, Magneto and the gang then hatched a plan to escape with Reed back to his home dimension and finally be free of this hellish world once and for all. As they hatch their master plan though, the not so lucky peeps were sniffed out by Zombie Wolverine where he then relayed the information to the boys who busted through the subway walls ready to help themselves to some fresh eats. Saving this in his back pocket for an awesome moment like this, Magneto then used his powers to pick up one of the old subway trains which he then tossed at the horde knocking them out of commission. Hey man, undead or not, you get whacked with a full on subway train, you're definitely going to be feeling that one in the morning. Upon getting outdoors, the gang would not be faring much better as they were greeted by an entire legion of undead supers. Ready to fight like a true man though, Magneto prepared to fight to the death until he and the others realized that the zombies had suddenly become blinded. That is revealed to have been the work of Ultimate Susan Storm who made her way to this earth with the other Ultimate Fantastic Four members who came to save their Reed. Using this distraction, Magneto and the gang then made their way to the teleporter where they planned to escape. As they prepped their trip, the mutant leader opted to stay behind for if they were to all leave together, it would leave the dimensional doorway open to the super zombies. Max then has the Fantastic Four and the remaining humans go through while he pulls the coolest most dramatic hero move yet where he uses his power to blow the machine up, frying countless undead in the process and locking them out of the multiverse. Upon waking up from the destruction, Magneto then exclaims his excitement at his plan working, only for that excitement to turn to pure terror as he found himself surrounded by a gang of angry and rather hungry supers. Ready to gobble the dude up out of revenge, the starving supers told the mutant to give up, only for him to be as cocky as ever, telling the zombies that he still had plenty of fight left in him. The mutant then channels some big villain energy as he summons a swarm of metal all around him and tosses it into the horde, tearing into their nasty necrotic flesh. Max then takes to the skies and attempts to escape, only to be relentlessly pursued by the likes of Zombie Spider-Man and Colonel America. The lucky cat managed to grab hold of Magneto, thinking he was about to get a snack, only for him to grab the hero's shield and used it to slice his head in half. Arguably one of the most disgusting yet iconic panels from Marvel Zombies and I absolutely love it. Armed with Cap's shield, a weakened Magneto made his way to the streets below. Keeping an eye out as he tried to make his escape, Max gets a message from his followers aboard Asteroid M confirming that they were still alive and awaited his return. Vowing to find a way back to his people, Magneto tried to get to the sewers only to be spotted by Zombie Hawkeye. Ready to claim his prize, Clint fired his arrow at Mags only for him to shoot Cap's shield at the exact same moment. This Texas-style draw resulted in Magneto being struck in the side with the arrow while poor Hawkeye was sadly decapitated. Hey, he tried man. In the commotion, Cap managed to get his shield back only for Max to use his power to slam Steve through a skyscraper, lodge Hawkeye's arrow through Thor's throat and brought the rest of the building down upon Giant Man and the others. Seeing how awesome his savagery was, Magneto decided to take the time and gloat about how cool he was only for Zombie Wasp to sneak up from behind and bit his neck out. Hey man, you want to go and emote once you get a kill, that's fine, but you gotta make sure coast is clear before you do. Being immobilized from the chonky bite, Magneto, still being cocky, wished that the zombies would choke on him. Fighting over who got the first piece of mutant meat, Thor barged through proclaiming that the man was his only for Hulk to prove he was the true alpha by jumping into the battle where he ripped the poor dude's leg right out of its socket. Upset that he broke his snack, Hulk had to jealously look on and munch on his Magneto rotisserie leg while the other heroes helped themselves to a magnetic buffet. R.I.P. Magneto, even though this was kind of your fault, you went out like a true G. Magneto stays one of the goats of Marvel Zombies.
Despite Earth-2149 Magneto being completely devoured before he could turn, there is a universe in which the Master of Magnetism is allowed to complete his transformation into his disgusting flesh-eating form. This Magneto comes from Earth-13264, which is a variant of the original Zombieverse of Earth-2149. Once Doctor Doom had gotten the powers of a god, he took this world and renamed it the Deadlands, which was part of Battleworld during the events of Secret Wars. During this time, heroes from different dimensions were sent to these different lands to fight like they were real-life action figures, getting played with in a cosmic toy box. In the Deadlands, these Marvel zombies were at constant war with Ultron and his legions, who sought to rid this Earth of all impurities. These impurities, of course, being these nasty flesh-eating zombies. However, soon becoming aware that he was a puppet in God Doom's Game of Fate, Ultron decided to cut his strings once again. It is here that he comes face to face with this Earth zombie Magneto, who is the leader of the zombie armies. The groups agreed that the only way to win was to put their differences aside and join forces so they could take over Battleworld. Zombies working with robots to take over the universe? Y'all are speaking my language. Prior to their alliance, both forces had tried their hardest to attack the human settlement called Salvation, which was run by Wonder Man, Vision, and Jim Hammond's Human Torch. However, due to the energy shield the heroes had around the settlement, neither group was powerful enough to get in. Being the tenacious Tin Man that he was, Ultron refused to give up and studied the shield's ionic energy and discovered that if he combined his robotic army with the flesh of the Marvel Zombies, they would be strong enough to break the shield and take the settlement over. More than happy to get a camp full of tasty humans to eat, Magneto agreed to let his forces fuse with Ultron's army, becoming disturbing zombie robot hybrids. The army then stormed the settlement and attacked the shield, much to the shock and horror of Vision and the others. As the boys attacked, Ultron and Magneto watched on and asked each other what emotions that they were feeling at this time. Ultron went on to give a great dissertation on him being a machine, yet was able to feel a wide range of emotions, while Magneto simply expressed that he was excited at all the people he was going to eat. Straight to the point, man. I'm with you. While all seemed doomed for the humans, an Old West variant of Hank Pym was here to help the heroes at this time. He used his intellect to reverse engineer the Ionic Shield Generator's power to absorb Ultron's hive mind. Vision, Wonder Man, and Iron Cross then sacrificed themselves to fly into the energy and combined into one unified hive mind themselves that would override Ultron's brain, thus allowing them to become the new Ultron that controlled Magneto and the other robot zombie hybrids. Remote controlled zombie robots? Dude! Sign me up! I want one! And that is the full gory story of the Zombie X-Men. There may have been a few stragglers I missed, but those were the characters with any kind of remotely sizable involvement in the overall tale. The X-Men are such cool and unique characters, and seeing beloved heroes like these developing a taste for flesh and wiping out all of mankind is a terrifying, but kinda cool thought. With mutants now canon within the MCU after the events of Ms. Marvel, and the upcoming Marvel Zombies series being rated R, I wonder which of these gruesome mutants we will get to see on screen. More than anything, I want to hear what you think. Did you know this about the X-Men? Was there something I missed? What other characters would you like to see us cover? Sound off in the comments! Also be sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed today's content, subscribe to the channel, and tap the bell icon to be notified of all of our latest videos. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the music in this video, it was all made by my boy Agnes. You can check out his Spotify in the link below. You can also check out our Patreon also in the link below. Thank you so much for watching. Remember you are awesome and loved. God bless, and I will see you in the next one.